Guys, we have a huge announcement to make. The McAllister Arts Podcast is going to be doing something completely new and different. We're going to be creating our first ever action comedy film entitled The Chronic Crusaders about one of our favorite subjects, cannabis. We have already got a solid cast and crew behind this project with the goal of releasing on April 24. Now, as everyone in show business knows, the one thing you desperately need to get a film started is funding. And that's where you, the listener, come in. Even if you only have a dollar or two to spare, this helps us tremendously. So, if you're a fan of the podcast and want to help, this is your chance. Please check out the link in the description for the Kickstarter to donate. Again, we appreciate all the listeners for tuning in every week, and we hope you consider helping this dream become a reality. Stutterbox Productions is a backbone for many of the events they see in the Midwest, from EDM festivals to late-night hip-hop shows. This company has been working closely with this podcast since the beginning, and we always have plenty of things planned for the future. So, if you're looking to plan your next Get Gear event, head over to their Facebook page to learn more today. All right, man. This is the first episode back in this podcast studio, by the way. Oh, it's been a while. So, well, like, uh, well, both for you being here in a while, but like, this is the first like McAllister Hours episode that's like been done in this studio. Oh, in this studio, in this oh, studio wow. specifically, yeah. Ooh, special so, guest. So, yeah, this is a big deal, man. Very big deal. Episode one ninety five, guys. We're here. We're not live, but here live in the present. Me and David right now, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> guys. One ninety five, McAllister Hours podcast. I'm your host, Wise Cole McAllister. We're joined today by a very special guest. It's been a, I think it's since episode 27 or 28 since you've been on almost 107 i think around 170 if not more episodes since you've been on guys it's david maruccia how the fuck are you doing today man (laughs) oh well thank you so much for having me man i'm very glad to be back on here um i remember the first time we did it was in your little apartment (laughs) back you know um off of ingersoll yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's been a while, man, and you know, life has changed. You, you've moved twice. Yeah, I've moved twice, and that's, that's same, right. <laughs> that's yeah, we same. both have. You know, yeah. I went out of state for a while. Did the whole law that's school true. thing in Illinois. Um, loved the law school. Hated Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and yeah, no, I'm glad to be to be back here in Des Moines. I mean, Des Moines. Say what you want about it, but. You know, if you're from Des Moines, it's home. Like, like yeah, exactly. I, I, I don't know too many people who moved away. There's some, but a lot of people who move away move back. And um, yeah, man. And you know, different stages in life. And I was just getting ready to go to law school, getting ready mm-hmm. to move. Um, life update: <laughs> graduated. <laughs> that's a good thing. Still waiting for the bar bar results. Um, whether or not pass or not, we're gonna be drinking that night. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, and you know, bought a house in Ankeny. Now we're uh, working at Principal Financial. Yeah, your life truly has changed it's a lot, man. Been totally, totally different, man. Yeah. Uh, well, for those who don't know, you're the brother-in-law to Molly, who is the uh, assistant slash girlfriend of the of the podcast. <laughs> I put the most important part first. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, it's kind, it was kind of weird, you know. I got, I have to like watch that episode again because, like, you know, us knowing each other then versus us knowing each other now, it's been such a transition, you know. And like, you know, both our relationship has grown, like, and our lives have grown. Like, mm-hmm. I guess, how does it feel being like? I guess, like, you know, I guess technically you don't know because you're still weighing your bar results. But I mean, for the most part, you've completed law school. Like how, like describe that journey. How's that felt? You know, I, my, both my parents were lawyers, so mm-hmm. I, you know, have definitely heard plenty about that yeah. experience and how that is. So get into it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Law school. I mean, it's, it's a different animal. Um, and especially doing it during COVID, like, like we started, I started law school August, 2020. And so Illinois rules were, everything's online everything's remote so didn't really get that whole first year experience you know being cold called on and whatnot sitting in there in the hot seat i mean i did the first year of law school in my apartment um but it's just you know heavy reading burden and lots of pressure um we had like people drop out the first week we had people drop out after the first semester i'm sure yeah and so it's I mean, it's one of those things where by the time you've been in it for two semesters, you know whether or not you're going to finish. Because mm, um, a sure. lot of it, it's 
it's not so much that law is an insurmountable like thing to understand i mean you know it's reading comprehending what's been written down and then using whatever you've read to make an argument so like why can i um you know not go out in the street and sell well whatever freaking drugs that i've written you, you know written whatever drugs that i want to sell you know what i mean there's a law so you have these things called so you have like statutory law you know statutory sure. law is you know the legislature or the county or whatever is like this is the rules no one can drive 50, over 55 miles an hour that's statutory law is just written down and then you have things like Sta sorry statutory is in like state law uh, or it's different or is, how's that discerned from yeah, like yeah, federal yeah, yeah, law yeah 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 well so so statutory law i mean, I mean federal law is statutory law statutory law is, oh, a, is okay, a law okay. made up by some kind of government or legislative body so these okay. are the people who make the laws these okay. people have made it's the just laws. the law in itself yeah, and yeah, then yeah. that divides down yeah, to yeah. federal state I yeah get yeah it. and I then it. um then you have this thing called like common law and common law is essentially judge made law mm -hmm. you know and this comes and like, like our whole legal system is based off of the english um common law system and so mm, there would sure. be there would be a law you know or there would not be a law and then let's say david goes out and starts you know beating his wife in public they're like yo 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 we don't like what you're doing you know we're taking you in and i say well why am i in trouble and so We'll say, well, you are out, you're, you know, beating up your wife, um, and you can kind of use a statute. So let's say that would fall under a public um, public nuisance. Mm -hmm. You know, what what is that? How is that defined? We'll say if you're out at night in public out of your house, this qualifies as a public nuisance. And therefore... You're going to go, you know, here's the penalty. You do 30 days in jail for that. And so once that gets written down, it becomes common law. Because then if you go out and do that, then whatever tr trial you go to, the judge can say, well, based on this decision, David versus city of Des Moines, mm. you know, we have interpreted a public nuisance to <clears throat> include going outside and beating your wife and please don't beat your wives everybody don't do anything <laughs> like that um but you're going to get some of the core <clears throat> values of the show David. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you, you know and so that kind of becomes that kind of becomes a trend and so what you do in law school is you read a lot of common law you know how did we get all these rules i mean not every single law is written down not every single crime is written down not every single thing is written down and so common law kinds of builds on itself it's okay how have we dealt with something similar to this or how if we have a similar case in kentucky you have a similar case in don't follow laws from kentucky <laughs> if you have a similar case in you know washington or somewhere um but then you can point to that but hey similar circumstances and then, so we all come to like a common understanding of either what the law is or what the law should be. And then the legislative body of either the, you know, the county, the state, or on a federal level comes and decides, okay, based on that interpretation, this is the law now. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So like, so nothing, the only thing that super and that's why we have levels of state right mm -hmm. so like if a judge makes a law and you don't like it then you can just be like okay i'm going to appeal to the state or the federal level or whatever mm -hmm. so what your job is mostly is dealing with the common law yeah. right like going like you have clients that are dealing problems and you have to go through and filter through i guess it could be either but i would assume it's more so common law than yeah yeah the and, other and, kind. and i mean the thing with common law is common law can very easily become statutory law but mm. then you also have things that so not to get too technical no go for it but man. i mean so everybody kind of has a decent understanding of like jurisdiction right mm -hmm. like you know if you get in a fight here in iowa 
I can't drag you to Germany in German courts. <laughs> like, well, like that's not our, you know, that's not my problem. Sorry, he's beating up. Yeah, he, he, everybody would be getting you know, beat with bamboo sticks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they don't have jurisdiction to enforce their laws on you because you're not in Germany or whatever. Yeah, exactly. You know, and so the way the common law works here um, is essentially if I mean, there's there's levels to it, right? And so let's say there's a decision by a judge from the Iowa Supreme Court that's binding on everyone below that judge which is every lawyer every judge that essentially becomes the law Mm -hmm. for the state of iowa dealing with that case and so if a judge says um you know no one can drive 60 miles an hour on 34th street being very simple that's the law anywhere you go and anywhere you go in the state of iowa so if you're on 34th street and you're driving over 60 you can go to jail um, if a judge at like a lower circuit or in a smaller district decides that it's common law, but it's not binding on everyone above it. So it's, so it's always bind, binding on people below you. So like the, the Supreme court, whatever they say the law is, is a law for everybody. Yeah. You know? Uh, exactly. and so based on that interpretation, um, and, and it just kind of works its way down. And so. When you're making a legal argument, I can say, hey, well, if I'm making an argument in Iowa for why we should be able to go above 60 on 34th Street, I can say, well, if you look at, you know, the city of Columbus, it's kind of like Des Moines on 34th Street. They can drive 70. We should be able to do that. And there was a case where a judge in Columbus, Ohio, said we can do that. Mm. That's influential, but that's not us, you know. So sure. the so, so the Iowa Supreme Court has the uh, gets kind of like the final say in what happens in Iowa. Similar similarly to how the Supreme Court has a similar has um, say on whatever happens across the country, and so and so you know so it's always binding down. It's not always binding going up. And so the I so if I'm making an argument in the Supreme Court, I can say, well, in Iowa they decided this based on this, this, this. This is why you should, you know, side with me. And they can say, well, in Texas they they fought another way. Supreme Court does it the other, you know. Supreme Court gets to decide that. Okay. Okay. So let me ask you this. So this might be kind of taking a left turn, but yeah. like, um, I, as you may or may not know, the audience definitely knows, but yeah. uh, I'm a libertarian. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I, you know, I don't subscribe to full anarchy, but I do kind of like a lot of their ideas. I do think that there should be some laws, but I guess, let me just ask you the general question, you know, um, you know, saying like, you know, having a judge kind of decide things for the whole, you know, you can see how there can be a lot of, um, people that take advantage of that system. Um, I guess what's your uh, counter argument to like the libertarian mindset of like, you know, actually limiting laws might actually help people. And I guess like, what's your opinion on like, you know, restrictions and laws, I guess in general. Yeah. So, I mean, at the end of the day, somebody has to be like, like the primary decision maker, right? We have to live in a society that's governed by a set of principles that we all kind of, subscribe to not to the same degree not to the same level um and i mean of course there's issues with the way that our system is structured i mean we give more we give a lot of weight to laws decided by people who live in one part of the country yeah um and not so much to people who live somewhere else but then if the people who live in that part of the country, East Coast, um, <clears throat> you know, they're, and, and, and again, you know, your, your dad's a judge. Mm-hmm. And so part of his world, you know, unfortunately, no. <laughs> okay. I mean, your, your world view is going to be shaped by your experiences. Yeah, you know? exactly. And exactly. so if you're in New York your whole life and now you're the New York federal court and now you're, you know, you can work, go to the DC district and you become a Supreme Court judge, that's all you've known. You've never been to, you know, Bozeman, Wyoming, or, you know, something like that, where it's a whole different country over there, you know, mm-hmm. and then the laws with guns over there is totally different than it is in New York. You know, in Bozeman, as many wolves on your property as people, you know, if you don't have a gun, you're dinner, yeah. you know. And, well, uh, that's why I say get a gun. <laughs> 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 you know, um, but so going into how how it's structured, I mean, I, I mean, it's hard to think of a 
better system because you need to know like what the laws are how to interpret the law why this system works and so with that part i mean i think you know you should definitely have people who have at least studied it um do i think everybody should take the bar exam no the bar exam makes you memorize things you'll never use so you think the problem is education at the end of the day people just aren't knowledgeable enough about the law that's Uh, why they fall prey to all these things uh, well i mean i think people don't want to and this has always been the issue i mean people really care about what they really care about with that one that oh, i mean yeah. like if i'm a gun rights guy i know everything about guns and mm-hmm. laws, blah, blah blah yep okay well how do you feel about um you know something like as complex as like immigration or you know what do you know about i was just reading about this today you know how should we regulate the financial industry who gets to have say and things like that and so like you might not know anything about that and so you're gonna punt the ball like i mean we're all experts in you know what we do most often Mm -hmm. but you know i don't know anything about lacrosse or (laughs) luge you know how how should the the lacrosse rules be interpreted you know in order to make a better game and so i mean you and so when you talk about law you need people who know what the laws are or at least have the tools to be able to figure out what people should should you know want but if you want to have a, a libertarian system where you can open it up just have the people what should the speed limit be whatever you want then people die until your kid gets hit yeah i mean people are gonna die regardless I, I mean i think the libertarian argument would be that less people would die actually with laws because i think laws actually um you know influence like there's a there's a line draw when there's a line draw it influences people um to get to that point like for instance like binge drinking in the u.s right mm-hmm. like the fact that we put a legal limit on alcohol it's like almost it's created the binge culture that the u.s is whereas you look at other countries and you know they're allowed to drink at 15 16 you don't really mm-hmm. see as many problems with alcohol okay i'm gonna push back a little bit sure a little bit. go for uh, it because uh, I, I might not be as knowledgeable no 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 no, that, no, so. no no but i mean I, I was in ireland um, okay and their drinking age is 18 okay um but they still they regulate that another way they uh, they'll shut down pubs early Mm. and they'll increase the price of alcohol you know and you know teenagers are not the most wealthy individuals in society (laughs) you know and i I, i've been a teenager before you know sometime my wife still thinks i am um but (laughs) but uh so i mean if you go out and look and so i mean and and like something like speed limits right Mm -hmm. should everybody be able to go out at speed they want absolutely but should they be able to go whatever speed they want next to a school kids are dumb yeah you know and so they might might, they they might not know the rules whatever should we be able to like plow through them at 90 miles an hour probably not and so you and so that's kind of how society works and i like i lean libertarian but it's also very issue dependent you know yeah and so I, I, i'm the same way yeah I yeah, and, yeah. And, and and kind of pivoting um you know i mean i, I definitely think there's especially living through covid and i, and I hate this because everything like you know, you know this preemptive this two world night covid covid is the new like bc ad like that that's the new line yeah uh, and yeah, so exactly and so coming through that, I mean, you see how much money the government has to do things that people need. And so it's like, okay, everybody's at home. No one's working. What if we just send everyone $2,000? Where did that money come from? I don't know. They found it somewhere. You know, Joe Biden opened his wallet or Trump did or whoever did. And they found the money. And for me as a fairly libertarian person like the government is really good at doing two things the u.s governments to be specific two things war and spending yep yep oh yeah you know it's their bread and butter yeah 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 (laughs) but the spending money is like what are you spending money on you know because and, and and the thing is that both parties do the same dance where whatever they want they have endless money for Mm -hmm. you know like we want to you know go fight the russians endless money completely never ends 
24 billion sure we got it where'd it come from i don't know no debate we're not even debating it <laughs> Healthcare for kids <laughs> mm, i don't know eh. We're going to have to, you know, put together some committee and explore this. It's like if you guys really wanted to solve this problem, because you did. I mean, childhood poverty hit a record low during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It's like we're going to, you know, give parents with kids money. I'm going to be a parent with kids. Send me some money. But I would be interested to compare that to what it is now, though. Yeah. I mean, it's gone. Wait, the child poverty rate is gone? No, 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 no. The child tax credit is gone. Oh, the, and so oh, poverty I see. had the childhood poverty had the largest year to year increase post COVID as yeah. it ever has. Yeah, okay. That so that's why we've yeah, predicted. Yeah, yeah, okay. Exactly. Cause I mean, but if you want to help people, you can. Yeah. But then, you know, they all get together with their generals and someone's like, Ooh, I know. What if we send uh cluster bombs to fight the Russians? Then you're like <laughs> what like what yeah we don't even have like they're mostly illegal but like that's a huge logistical like logistical challenge yeah and to put them on a ship schlep them to europe put them on a train schlep them to poland put them in a truck get them to ukraine yeah. put them in other trucks get them on the front line and then shoot them yeah it's a lot of money too. it's a lot of money yeah you know and and they're not cutting their paycheck to <laughs> do all this shit. Exactly. Uh, uh, and so that's where I'm just like, if you guys wanted to solve these problems that we have, you know, <clears throat> and, and I was in Europe. And Europe Europe is good. Like Europe is they're fine. Like they're not better than us, they're not worse. I did not see, you know, tons of homeless people when I was in Europe. And I did not see all of all of your I'm sure there's plenty of different parts of Europe. But overall, I mean, they're very similar society. They're they're very similarly wealthy, you know. And so I'm just like, why are we helping them so much? How does this benefit us at all? That's kind of been what like, like one of the things that's made me really pivot politically to be more anti both parties because they don't care about people. If they care about then, people. No, not at all. If they care about people, like, I mean, what's what can you fund more than, you know, helping poor kids? Yeah. Like give them money and just give their parents money. Their parents know what to do with it. Are some people going to abuse it? Sure. You know, it's like just like funding Ukraine. Ukraine is a horribly corrupt country. It was before the war. Still is. The Pentagon just lost $6 billion. It's just unaccounted for in Ukraine funding. It's like, where'd it go? It's like, oh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, we got a hundred rifles. Oh, it's yeah, that fighter jet that just went missing. Yeah, yeah, I use the F thirty five. That's a that's a almost a hundred million dollar plane. Like that is the biggest money dump ever. And the thing is, they don't even work. They're not good aircraft. Like they're not good aircraft because. And, and, so it's and, possibly might have accidentally done that. Like it's very like that's more likely just given how shitty those aircrafts really are. Yeah, is what you're saying. I mean, it's just there's endless money, so quality goes down because you're not. Yeah, you can always beg for more mm-hmm. money, and yeah, when and what, what do you not want to fund the, you know, the defense industry? Mm-hmm. Do you remember 9/11? Yes, <laughs> they weren't shooting missiles. <laughs> you know, they didn't send fighter jets over here. You know, and the F-35 has just been, I remember hearing about this, and this was back when I was in college, like like undergrad, and all the money's gone into it. It's supposed to be this can-do-everything airplane, and someone just ejected, uh, I think it was like in South Carolina or Kentucky or somewhere, and it was because of weather. And you have the U.S. Department of Defense putting out a Facebook post asking for help finding a hundred million dollar aircraft that was literally taken down by some rain <laughs> i'm just like what are we doing who is in charge here like, <laughs> like that is, who an like a hundred million dollar airplane or close to that is gone and we can't find it i'm just like give me a, i'll give me a hundred million dollars i'll 
do way better things than <laughs> dump an airplane in someone's farm. <laughs> like the interview's like, yeah, we had a loud noise and an airplane. I was like, gosh, what if that fell in someone's house or in a school? <laughs> like, didn't Elon Musk make a poll like, what would be better if I had this money or if the government had this money? And like, yeah, of course everyone voted for Elon. <laughs> well, well, I mean, and. And, and again, kind of going back to like a libertarian argument where like the government is good at really good at you know spending money and killing mm-hmm. people. You know we're really good at that. We're good at what to do after. The, we're good at taking people out. What to do after is really we struggle with that. You know, again, U.S. Yeah. government. When I say the government, I mean U.S. government to be specific. Yeah, we don't do it. We just keep doing. <laughs> just yeah. keep doing the the killing. Yeah, the- yeah. And then <laughs> there is no plan. Like 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 with this whole Russian thing. Um, Everyone's like, we need to kill Putin. Someone just kill Putin. Everything's like, do you know who sits behind Putin? Like, where have I seen this? And it's the same people from like 9-11 and, and forward. Mm. Like, I know that I cannot trust you people. Because one, I've seen your report card. <laughs> it's absolutely horrible. It's dog shit. It's dog shit. And, and, and two... <laughs> And two, again, the same people, the, you know, the McCarthy's, the Biden's, the Pelosi's, the Schumer's, the, you know, whatever, all the Republicans, like, and then the same old generals who, you know, work for the U.S. government and go work for Raytheon. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, I can't trust you guys because the thing about the, per- like, the person who sits on top of, like, all the crazies, like a Saddam, he's there for a reason because he's the lid on everything else that's below him and you take that lid off and then gotta deal with everything after him you know because we're like yeah saddam is a horrible mass murderer blah 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 go there we kill him we got saddam let's go america fuck yeah now we get we got isis now we have like like instead of saddam one guy we could be like yo saddam chill the fuck out we have isis to deal with you know and now people are chopping heads on the street and the same thing and they really lost me with this whole um thing in libya with gaddafi because Gaddafi... Remind me what happened with that again. He was killed in the streets. The U.S. sponsored a coup. Or like the U.S., Italy, France. Because he wanted to move from the petrodollar to having like an African Union currency. So having Libyan oil not sold based on the U.S. dollar standard. Oh, I see. And okay. then once he said that, well, he's mass murderer. He's killing his own people. We have to get rid of him. And so we go to Libya, there's a coup, Gaddafi gets, you know, <clears throat> gets overthrown, they kill him in the streets. And then less than two years later, Libya is a failed state, and they're literally selling African slaves on the streets. And I'm like, God damn. I'm like, uh, in broad daylight. I'm like, I'm like uh, this was your plan? Like, this is better libya like ask people which country libya's two countries now that are one is recognized the other one's not they're still fighting did they hire like a louisiana and like uh uh it's auctioneer <laughs> <laughs> hey uh five dollars ten dollars ten dollars ten dollars ten dollars you know, and, and, th- and then these same people are like you know and, th- and and they try to do the same thing in syria you know and Again, if they'd got rid of the leader of Syria, you know, ISIS would have taken all of it over. Yeah. Because it was literally Putin and um, Bashar al-Assad fighting ISIS in Syria. Because otherwise, the whole thing is ISIS. And then what? Hey, yeah, we killed the spider. Now we killed the main one. Now we have a thousand little ones to have to deal with, which is way harder because yeah. then you don't know who to go after. You know, and, and the last thing is like this whole Afghanistan thing. It's like, okay, so before we're going to go to Afghanistan, get rid of the Taliban government, and then the Afghans will be happy. We'll give them freedom and democracy. 20 years later, who's in charge? <laughs> Taliban government is in charge. <laughs> the only difference now is, one. They got a bunch of weapons. Yeah, yeah. They have all of our shit. <laughs> you know, they have all of our shit that we paid for. Like, I need to go get my damn Humvee that I paid for like yo can I have that back please you know and then they chase us out and who's in charge the Taliban like what do we do and like imagine being someone who grew up like a young girl you get educated the Taliban's gone you go to college whatever 
And then it's like, all right, back to the Taliban. You're like, what? Like, it's horrible. <laughs> like, you're in a worse position because at least if you're born just Taliban, that's all you know. You don't have a taste of freedom. And so, I mean, my main point is these, like, you can't trust them. You cannot trust the yeah. people who aren't, like, you've, I've seen your report cards. I've seen your project. You guys are absolute shit at this. Except if you look at Raytheon's, look at Boeing's, um, just stock returns. They're, they're off the charts. They're off, like, there's very few better investments than in U.S. weapons manufacturers. Because anytime you see that money's going to Ukraine, it's not going to Ukraine, it's going to Raytheon. How do, I, how do we get a cluster bomb? <laughs> Uh, you know how do we get these f-16s how do we you know get these targeted munitions like they don't have them we're not like you know so we're not like giving someone money we are paying raytheon to make them then paying somebody to ship them and then paying you know and when you have this many people on payroll someone's gonna start stealing that's how you lose six billion dollars if everybody just takes a little bit off the top you know those 90 hum those 100 humvees end up as 75 how, how do you think the Mexican drug cartels got javelin missiles? <laughs> you know, war war is great. It's really, really great for weapons smugglers or if you want to move anything. Because yeah. it's chaos and there's no laws. Mm. You know, there's no laws. And so, like, if <clears throat> this place gets taken over, you're like, oh, we have all this leftover ammunition we don't need. There's a market for, for guns. There's a market for ammo. And the people who, you know, Work with the black market. They know where that is. They know where to go. They know where to go. It's like, you know, and all you have to do is take a little bit off the top. You know, because if we're supposed to deliver 100 rifles and we deliver 95, you know, so we still got 95 rifles, you know, it's, it's cost of doing business. Someone's making money off of it. You know, and again, it's our money. Like, it's, and that's what makes me angry because we have money to do all these ridiculous things. And, it's just, yeah, it, it, like that's how I'm like, you guys don't care about people. Yeah. And they don't leave. They're fucking ancient. Like, why are we <laughs> run by dinosaurs? Well, that's the problem, man. So I guess l let me uh, pivot back to like the original. Like, let me just kind yeah. of play a little devil's advocate and like okay, the anarchist go, argument. Uh, yeah, we'll get through. Well, this will be the last part before we move on. But, um, uh, you know, like we have the, all those problems with government. Like, it eventually leads to that. I guess, like, what's your solution to like to that problem of like things always getting bad, people and, you know, bad people getting in power, et cetera? Yeah, yeah. Um transparency like a transparency that's almost uncomfortable mm. because then you will have the people who can deal with that running the government you know like so for example um after this whole GameStop crazy shit started you know everyone became a whole everyone was a stockbroker all of a sudden <laughs> you know uh, just because they made some trades and i got some gains and now we're going to the moon you know it's just stupid reddit shit but <laughs> after that all that chaos happened people start looking and like yo how come nancy pelosi has better stock returns than warren buffett is nancy pelosi the best like investor in the fucking country and no one knows it or does she have access to all the information and yeah. influence like if you so so like if you came to me mm -hmm. and you're like here's my company and show me you know hey it's gonna it's gonna do really well and then i get to decide on whether or not you do really well i can pre-buy those shares early or i can put myself in a really good position to say okay well once your ipo launches i can wait and then I'll grant your whatever bill that you wanted. Or mm -hmm. I'm, um, you know, now we have the, you know, my Callister munitions factory. <laughs> and then, you know, we'll start it. You know, the IPO, eh, you know, it's a new company. You know, we'll, you know, okay, your stock's at five bucks now. It's not yeah. bad. It's not bad. And so I buy a million shares and I'm sitting on it. And then I'm like, hey, we need weapons on Ukraine. <laughs> why don't we give why don't we give that contract to them like Callister <laughs> munitions and and then the stock goes to a hundred I get off 
you know and so it's like you have you're in position to be both have the insider information and have uh influence over what happens and like for me one thing that i would do personally because like right now i know i work with securities like i just can't go buy stocks willy-nilly because as a registered rep I have access to stuff that you don't have access to. Mm, I see. I and see. so because of that, I can't buy any IPOs. Mm. And I, like, if I make a trade, I can't flip it within 30 days. And all my trades have to be pre-approved. Mm. And so why not have the same thing for Congress? They have way more information than I do. They have way more influence. And having that level of transparency that says, how much is my, you know, representative profiting from this war yeah if you see that then it's like you know that definitely it, it changes your behavior yeah because you can't hide your hypocrisy you know it, it's easy to hide like you know if i go out there and say oh, be a good person whatever and then go back and do whatever the heck i want <laughs> you know but and, and, and that's what they do and so i would have a like one strict salary limit it's like you wouldn't pay you well yeah. 250 you know, whatever. Um, and you, you can't buy stocks in individual companies. You have to be like mm-hmm. on an index or something where it's like you just can't be the primary insider on everything. Because it's even worse than an insider because you get to decide. Like you're an insider. Like it's not, it's not that you have the influence. You can make the determination on how well they're going to do. Like with Apple, if I had some, you know, and they have this new tech, I'm like, well, I'm going to make that tech illegal. Yeah, it, exactly. it goes down, and, and, and yeah. you can't like you're in that position. And so, my solution would just be like a very like you know, and, and your whole portfolio has to be public information. Yeah, I, you know, all these things sound great, but like at the end of the day, the government still has to be the one to like enact that. So, isn't it possible that, or not possible, but isn't it the reality that it will just always be in a loop? Again, I'm playing devil's advocate, but like well, that, this will always be in a loop, and that any kind of laws that are in place are always going to perpetrate this. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and and that's that's the hardest thing about it. Yeah, is really like how do you get? I mean, it's like you go somewhere and you sit for a while. You know, if I sat here for like two hours, I'm comfortable. Yeah, and then you try and move me. I'm like, bruh. <laughs> nah, it, 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 you know, and it's just that institutional inertia Hmm. where and then it feeds itself because i come in you know me and you with the new reformers like we should change all the things we should change all the things until we start making money i'm like (laughs) wow is it that bad you know you know we should tweak some things and then we make more money and like okay i mean we should not have transparency because now we're super rich. And then, you know, then, then, then the new youngins come in like, we should change yep. everything. And and that's, I think, and again, this is just me being hypothesizing, but I think that is the unspoken design of how to fight. Because like, you see these, you know, you know, on both sides, you have like, you know, your AOCs or like your... Um, you know your Ted Cruz, your what was it? What was the eye patch guy's name? I forget his name. Oh, um, God damn yeah, it! Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Texas, yeah, Texas yeah, Texas guy. Yeah, you're a Marco Rubio. These rising stars in the party who are gonna come in and change everything. And then mm-hmm. after a Never. couple of times, they just become insiders because it's so much easier. It's like, look, you could fight us, or, or, just <laughs> just, just relax for a while. Yeah. And then you sit and then you say, okay, this is kind of cushy. And then, and, and, and so that's what really makes it hard, which is why, like, I mean, I think you really need to have that uncomfortable level of transparency. Like, if everything that I did, like, I'm a public servant, I'm going to serve the public. Look at what I'm doing. I'm not hiding anything. You know, after, like, once you leave public office, you can do whatever you want. I don't care. Yeah, you know, and that's where my libertarian side is. But if you're gonna step up and say I want to lead the people, an additional like barrier to getting rid of like the really sleazy in it for themselves people would be okay. We're gonna see whatever you're doing, 
If mm-hmm. you're making a stupid amount of money and not, and we're not, like if you're getting rich and our roads are still shitty, there's still, you know, Craig the crackhead walking around. You no, know, bless you, Craig. But, <laughs> <laughs> but if that's still going on and we can see it, it's very easy to get rid of you. And so and then you're incentivized. Mm-hmm. to behave well if you're behind a closed door you know you can go out and say whatever you want but behind the closed doors you can do whatever you want it's really easy to slip into either doing nothing like hey just yeah. hear some shut up money just be quiet or join the system you know, yeah join the dark side come on <laughs> <laughs> well that's what one of the things that i think is really positive about the internet is i think the internet is doing a very good job of like opening those doors more and like you know even through the censorship that <clears throat> you know is prevalent in these big companies like there are i feel like there are way more passages and people or you know passages ways for people to be able to find that out versus what there was you know 30 50 years ago whatever you know what I mean? It's my turn to push back. <laughs> go for uh, it. Go for it. I mean, did you get on the internet with COVID during COVID? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was. But you know, I think I feel like podcasting was a way Podcast, to break through. Yes, yes. I, like that's the thing. There's always a way to break through, like with the internet. Like it, it's just such a powerful tool that you like. Whether it's some weird forum or like through some new you know media form that like they it's just so like the genius about it is it's so long that it's like it's so hard for them to like narrow down that mm-hmm. length time you know it's a lot yeah. harder anyways and i mean i think and again when you fight the institution the institution fights back and so i mean i think yeah. looking at like now the internet is essentially a public utility that like you can't do regular life without the internet yeah you know unless you're exactly. in, Bozeman, Montana, Wyoming, I don't know. Maybe there. If it's just you and your rifle and your hunting buffalo or whatever. But if you're not, if you're living in the world with us, then it's just like, I mean, it's very easy now to be censored, especially for like people on their, like when you see people who are very famous being censored, that shows you you know us little people mm-hmm. yeah that who you call them little <laughs> <laughs> there's a joke in there i don't know how i'm gonna make it <laughs> <laughs> shout out to snow white and the seven mystical <laughs> pals <laughs> that's good uh, that's good you know <laughs> But if it's not, anyway, but like what it goes to show is that, you know, we can throttle down your internet. We can demonetize your channel. We can, you know, keep you from this platform. Yeah. And now that's fair game Mm -hmm. because then it's like, okay, YouTube, take this person off or we're going to crank up, um, you know we're gonna start looking you know we might pass new regulations you might have to you know you might we might call you here and, and just depose we've got some questions that we want to <laughs> ask you that you don't want to answer and so your choice whatever we do is legal you know and what did this person do value you know he violated our community guidelines <laughs> what are community guidelines they're written very intentionally vague and yep. open to interpretation yeah and there's well, like 200 pages of yeah yeah it was just, it's a public company <laughs> do whatever they want you know no, no, no. Yeah. Free, free speech does not apply to a public company you know mm. you don't have a right to be on our website and say whatever you want you know if you want to go to a public forum yeah you can that's first amendment it says you can do that but and the yeah. government can't stop you but and it's interesting like the sorry not to interject no, 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 but like no, no, the, good, good. the libertarian part of me almost agrees with that ask like that philosophy you know that that like if you want to be on their platform and they want to take you down for any reason like they do in a sense have a right to do that but the problem is that these companies get bailed out by the government over and over and over again and then the government writes these things in law to enable them to do it you know yeah. to be able to profit more than they normally would in the free market so yeah, yeah. And, that's and, the problem and it's it's the merger of the government and and public private companies together yes you know yes and so and that's 
not necessarily always a bad thing. I mean, the government is not very good at certain things. Like, hey, yeah. make an airplane. They're really good. They're not good at that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> still pieces that F-35 flying somewhere. <laughs> Some farmer got himself, you know, so I, I, I guarantee you China's going to hit up that farmer and be like, yo, any spare pieces of F-35 you want to sell to us, you know? You know, I think a UFO took it. That's <laughs> it, it might be. That's a whole other thing. You know, you know what I mean? We can uh, we can pivot to that, you know, but... Yeah, no, I know you got a lot you want to uh, uh, yeah, 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 talk yeah. about if you yeah, want yeah. to. And, and I mean, we can say whatever we want about the government. But I mean, I think this, the one thing, honestly, I think that people should be careful of, or at least, I don't know, I'm not going to give advice. I'll tell you my personal philosophy is the U.S. government is just good at those two things. And the one way to solve most of it would be just an uncomfortable level of transparency. You know, we're going to, you want to be the guy, the guy, you want to be the girl, you want to be the day, whoever you want to be, you have to put your stuff out there. Not like, we don't need to know your history. I don't need to know what was on your MySpace page in 2006. Don't care. We need to know what are your motives. And does that, if you go out here and say, I'm fighting for the people, and then you vote against unions. Or they say, hey, child tax credit. Hey, let's eliminate poverty. Hey, why don't we, do that? like, can we fix bridges? Can we have clean water? Can we have, yeah. how do we, you know, can we deal with, like, homelessness or unhousedness or whatever in a strategic way? No. Can we have money so that wounded Ukrainian soldiers can have prostitutes? Yeah. <laughs> which is a thing uh, which is a thing and that's how 100%. it that's how it works it's like wait what like, yeah, they're wounded they're fighting for freedom in russia that's kind of ukraine that's hey, kind of russia you know what to be fair you gotta get your dick sucked if you get wounded uh, anymore, i mean yeah you know? for your country that be required. that's on them though that's their girl should be doing <laughs> that for free you know if the if i'm gonna risk my life and you want me to pay for it defending your freedom like Hey, it's 2023, man. It, and times are. <laughs> but I'm saying, if I have to go, then, you know, women can get. Oh, I gotta be careful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'll, we're, I'll, we're about okay, to die okay. the Patreon territory. I'm not saying that she should. <laughs> I'm not saying that they should not be paid. I'm just saying that we shouldn't have to pay for it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You know, Ukrainians. Figure it out. <laughs> yeah. It's 2023. Women are very capable of serving their country in a different capacity as men. <laughs> or in an equal capacity. Whatever you want to do. That's really how they should think about it. You it's know, a patriotic It's act. a patriotic Everybody got to do something, bro. <laughs> we got to help out. Uh, remember in World War II uh, when all the boys were in Normandy? <laughs> the girls were out here in the factory lines. They were playing baseball. They were, you know, they were working. You know, I'm suddenly a nationalist. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm just saying I should not have to pay for that. Yeah, I agree. And the cluster of bombs. I don't want to pay the cluster of bombs. It's all of it, all of it, all of it. That shouldn't be on me. That's a you problem. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, speaking of servicing your man, you're uh, having a baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's your pivot. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, man, have the baby on. Not watch the gender questions. <laughs> My wife will kill me. No, I know. I know. Uh, no, I, I, I understand that whole podcast. thing. Well, I mean, you can sit on the podcast for a while. <laughs> Here, sorry, I'm gonna move your paper just to get no, a drink. You're good, you're good. Um, yeah, man. Well, just uh, just like tell me in general because uh, you know I. Obviously, these people don't know. Don't I'm not a father. Um, like, how's that feel getting into that? Um, you know, helming that responsibility. I mean, it's so. Yesterday we had an ultrasound. It was uh, kind of like the bigger one. Like parents understand this, but like you don't understand until like you're in it. Like I can tell you, I can describe it for you, but like you see, you know, your child move, and I'm sure it's more emotional for my wife but i mean it's it's a very very miraculous thing it's 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 also a very big oh shit moment because then you realize mm. that 
it's not just about you anymore this is like you especially when you sign up for it voluntarily not an accident not a surprise <laughs> like yo you chose this path you, yeah you got to go down it and, and just it, it's really like even you just getting up for work in the morning is different it's like i gotta take care of this otherwise you know or just even walking around my house like you need to make sure everything's okay is this yeah safe? do i need this do i need that and then just realizing how much stuff you don't know and it's really easy to go down that rabbit hole of like i should do that blah, blah, blah. and mm-hmm. then you talk to parents are like just don't overthink it you mm-hmm. know because if you break it down this is just my own philosophy kind of sure if you break it down i mean we babies were designed kind of to be raised by 15 year old girls in a cave like <laughs> that's kind of <laughs> they're very durable you know that's why when babies come out they're very feral you know they're very like they wanna you know they wanna you know that's what kids are really bad at sharing until you make them because you gotta mm. compete against like all the other kids with resources you know kids are yeah. fairly durable you might be able to fall you know like being pregnant is hard but you're still able to like you know you're still very alert and you because sometimes you gotta go as a wolf back your shit up you know we gotta go and like kids don't need that much to be happy like you don't need to buy the newest most comfortable stroller like most of the lives you're hanging on like something your mom was clinging on to or whatever and so trying to like balance those perspectives but then also you don't want to be the one parent who's like carrying his kid like this but but you also want to like understand that if your kid is walking on the carpet and falls they're probably going to be fine if that if falling on the carpet killed kids there'd be no people alive you know or if you had like think think, think of like our parents parents mm. it's like in the 50s you, know, you could smoke on an airplane <laughs> so you got a pregnant <laughs> mom with a you know whiskey in her hand yep. smoking a cigarette and they were fine putting a little whiskey on the pacifier yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then they're the baby boomers like you guys were booming through all these things like how how are you all not dead like because they just figured out like you know their kids are very and it's very and it's a very tragic when a kid passes away but like they're very durable and so like as a parent trying to balance that out with also like I need to also civilize my kid. I can't raise some wildling who's going to be going around and, you know, grabbing something, whatever they want. And so just really balancing those two out where you really have to understand that kids are fairly, you know, they're durable. This and, and they'll do things at their own pace. Like, you can push them this way, push them that way. But, like, eventually, if you push too hard, they start pushing back. And oh, yeah. so to really trying to come in with all this understanding and also understand that the kid gets to have their say too you know you can <laughs> read all the books that you want they're just like you know what dad mom i'm just gonna be mean today and you can't do anything about it and just like i'm just gonna cry all day because that's on my agenda i don't know you have I scheduled for 3 p.m but i'm gonna shit and cry for two hours yeah, so, that didn't happen in my house growing up. Really? <laughs> yeah. T- tell me about growing up with a <laughs> lawyer and a judge. <laughs> oh, that's a whole other bucket. <laughs> uh, in, in short, there were a lot of rules. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> there were a lot. I got grounded a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and again, like it can work, and it, yeah, so, so you really have to balance that. But just like owning the response thing, just owning the responsibility is the biggest thing. Yeah. Really, just knowing that, hey, from from this point on like it's no longer just about you so yeah get your shit together yeah well and you know i think that's like something that people like me struggle with when it comes to like um you know wanting to have kids is like uh there is something about that like you are sacrificing a lot of your own personal time for something and the theory is that like you love the kid enough that like you're willing to do that but you know, there also are a lot of kids and a lot of parents who like don't have that. And then, you know, they have the kid, they, there's a lot of regret there and that like, they're not there for the kid and things kind of spiral out of control. Like it's uh, it's a tricky thing to kind of discern, but you know, that's why I like about you and your wife. Like I, like when I look at people having kids, you seem like a good couple, a good, 
it's a, it's a good situation to have a child. So um, I give a thumbs up to that. <laughs> I give a thumbs up to anybody <laughs> that has that in place. Not like most people I know who just have the fuck like. Yeah. You know, they're just not careful. <laughs> and I mean, there's some biological drive behind it. Like, sure, even, sure, hundred percent. And like, once you have, especially, I mean, and and of course, the burden is, you know, more highly borne by the person who has a kid. You know, the birthing person, to be politically correct. <laughs> <laughs> the mom has the burden. The birthing I- partner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so it's essentially just like. I mean, making sure, and, and and somebody has to step up though. If you don't step up, somebody will. But being the right mind state, and understand like it's not going to be perfect. Like there's no parent who's like, I loved my kid absolutely every single day of the world. No, it's like, and 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 just being fair to yourself and understanding that this is an individual. This is not a, you know, you and your wife didn't get together and write a code and then control C, control V. Like you can't copy and paste. It's going to be its own person. Yeah. You know, and some kids are just like their parents. Some kids are the exact opposite. So, like, understanding that both those possibilities are at play, you know. So, so I guess what what are, what are your thoughts in terms of like uh, like how are you gonna like approach like you know? Because I appreciate what you said in terms of like not wanting to you know like have that much of a grasp in your child's life, but you still have to be there in some sense to like guide them. Um, like, I don't know. Cause like, if you don't want to answer this, you don't have to, I hope this isn't too personal, but like, you know, I know you and your wife kind of have different uh, spiritual beliefs. And I kind of wonder like, and you know, I'm maybe there are other differences too. Like there are differences between people. Um, you know, I, I, how do you, I guess, how do you like think you're going to like, I don't know. Wh- how do you think about navigating that and all that? Like yeah, what's your yeah. thought process? Yeah. And I can speak to just like the spirituality thing. I mean, is, and we, with your partner, whoever you're with, just like, just because I don't share your religion does not mean that I don't respect it. Yeah. And so, yeah, like, exactly. having that as, like, the cornerstone, which is like, hey, I want to have the kid baptized. Well, let's baptize the kid. Not going to hurt me. Not going to do anything like that. I mean, it, it, this is something that's important to you, mm-hmm. you know? And I always tell my wife, like, hey, if you want to go to church, I'll go to church with you. Like, I'll go. Hope that I'm throwing the bus. But, uh... <laughs> If you want, if you tell me you want to go, I will go with you. You know, I just gotta check, make sure there are no games on at the time. But most of the time, you know, I'll go with you. And so I mean, usually just, they schedule it around. That. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going six a.m. service. There's games on at nine thirty, so we gotta be out of there. Hey, that's why you gotta be Catholic. You can go the night before. There you go. Uh, you know, but I mean, just having that understanding of, you know, I mean, and, and faith is extremely personal. And so just sure. making sure and whatever faith your child follows. I mean, I don't even if they don't follow your faith, I don't think as long as it's presented respectfully. Hey, we believe this because of this, you know, and we don't judge other people. Like, I'm not going to go to a mosque and be like, wrong, wrong. You guys are praying <laughs> the wrong God or, you know, go to a you know a temple or whatever and be like why does your god have 18 arms that's stupid why is he blue you know you get your ass kicked doing that you know and but like that's what they believe and like whatever you like who am i to say yeah you know i don't have the answer if we all had the answer they would not need faith you know like i don't need anyone to tell me that you know gravity's on <laughs> just to know that you know yeah. wherever i go you know but you know, walking off that way, you end up at a mosque. Walking off that way, you end up at a wherever. And so, and just having that idea, like, hey, this is something that's extremely personal and extremely mm-hmm. important to you. Um, and just balancing that out and, like, communicating that to the child, I think, is very important. Mm-hmm. That faith is an important thing, whether or not you believe, whether you don't believe. Just be respectful, you know. I think mm-hmm. most of human problems can just fall on the umbrella of just don't be a dick yeah <laughs> so, I mean, not yeah. a dick like you know uh yeah don't hurt people don't fuck kids don't be, don't be <laughs> yes, a dick please don't do those three things and you're mostly a good person <laughs> like you're 90 percent of the way there yeah yeah not not to deviate this point too much but like that's one thing that like really kind of pisses me off about like the modern day atheist community is a lot of them are very like antagonistical very attacking like um 
you know, just not being very humble and like understanding. Like, I think if you were, your goal is to actually like change the world and like change people's minds, it would be from that perspective versus like just going on and you know, just like attacking people and fucking with them just because they just because they have a different viewpoint. You know what I mean? It's one thing like if you're being a dick and calling somebody off for being a dick, like hell yeah, hell yeah I promote that hundred percent. But like, just to like, just to be, just to do it, just to you know, do that. How did Jesus walk on water? Huh? <laughs> like, Shut up, dude. Everybody has their own tale. Like, come on. This is written just 2,000 years ago. It's kind of like throwing physics at a kindergartner. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're just, yeah, you're like, just torturing them. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah and, and I don't want to refer to those people as kindergartners or the atheists as people who have physics, but it's just like we believe all kinds of things, you know? And belief is very personal because if you attack someone's belief you're attacking them mm -hmm. and i'm like if, if i attack you are you gonna be like okay you're right i deserve it or are you gonna be like yo back the fuck up you know <laughs> like your first reaction is like yeah hey you know like back yeah, the fuck up sure you know or i'm gonna get out of here mm -hmm. you know it's not yes i understand you've made sense to me now and so and that's one thing i look because i i used to be very like you know well this and that and, this, and i was like you know what I believe in the Lord of Light from Game of Thrones, the Lord of Light. <laughs> that's what I believe in now. You know? And yeah. if that's what you truly believe, like, who's, who can shake you? Like, I've mm -hmm. had a vision. I looked into the fire, and the Lord of Light <laughs> spoke to me. This happened at your house, too. Uh, in that fire we built back there, the Lord of Light spoke to me, and I felt it in my heart. And who are you to tell me what I saw and what I felt? Because you don't know what I saw, but I know what I felt was real, Coleman. Yeah, I felt you know, and, and so it's just like <clears throat> I'm never gonna attack that feeling for somebody because I don't know. Like, there's how many people in India who are gonna go to them and be like, "Yo, your God is wrong." They're like, "Fuck you, bro. Our <laughs> God is twice as old as your God." And so, what are you talking about? We've been believing this shit since 2000 BC, like BC. So, <laughs> what can we do? Like, your God was in diapers when we when we built our temples. Yeah. So like. Yeah, there's a point where it's like uh, you just realize, like it almost seems like an inevitability that people are always going to be religious and always going to have some yeah. higher power they believe in. Yeah. So, like at, at some point, you're just throwing your head, hands against a brick wall. And like you know, I would recommend people focus more inward than to yeah. like think about you know whatever. Like, yeah, and, and I think it's really important backing up your point to let people you know live and let live. Mm -hmm. Until y'all show my doorstep and tell me I'm a bad person, <laughs> then y'all can get them. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, right? Because once there's like, like when a religious group it has like, uh, like a, when they have an instigating incident or what, like some kind of instigation, whether it's like against homosexuality or like if they're just like you know going around to people's doorsteps or whatever, like yeah then it's 110 percent valid to like yeah tell that person hey you're being really shitty or like your organization's being really shitty like yeah, yeah i believe that 100 percent. but yeah to just like to like grandma betty just sitting on her porch just says you know hail mary and then you go up to her like fuck you grandma betty you god's a piece of shit all like, right yeah. grandma betty that's not helping <laughs> oh shit <laughs> <laughs> oh no right, i'm babe. sorry reardon's that was that was unintentional <laughs> she's not too far from here either <laughs> I drove past Grandma Betty on my way here. Oh, All right, feet, Grandma God. Betty. Who's a Catholic? Uh, we love you. We respect you. God damn it. Sorry, uh, Grandma Betty. So let me ask you this, kind yeah. of going back to kids, because, I mean, you know, unlike other podcast guests, like, I feel like, you you know, you and I know each other really well, because I mean, we're yeah. essentially family. Yeah. Um, Are we going to be family, Colin? Yeah. At, at some point. At some point. Okay. Thinking it's about it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. It's, All right. Good it's, good it's, it's been the talks. Yeah, it's been the talks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll have to cut that out. No, okay. <laughs> You're on the clock, bro. You know, you're young. <laughs> um, what What do you think about me? Do you think that um, I'm someone that should have kids or no? Oh my god! What kind of question is that? Like, hey, what do you think about me? <laughs> should I? Have is that a kids? shitty question? I mean, honestly, like you know, you're not the worst person I know has had kids. So, no, I mean. <laughs> Honest answer. Uh, I Osama like bin Laden had lots I of kids, it. so you know. <laughs> Adolf had a couple. Too, you, know, you know, did he? Did yeah. He? What, what are they at now? What are they, what are they doing? I thought there was at least. Maybe I'm wrong. Mm. We don't have our assistant here as usual to back us up. What but if, what if Vladimir Putin's one of his kids, bro? <laughs> 
Let me check his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> see, if, see if Putin has a see if that lines up. Him. See if that lines up. No, I mean honestly, like, like I said, I mean, going back to what I said earlier, human beings are designed to be raised by like fifteen-year-old girls in caves because that was <laughs> most people who have. And I'm not saying fifteen-year-olds should have kids, but ninety percent of our history, most of our history, is that like by the time you were thirty, you were a grandma. You know, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, like that's true. That's going back until like what, 200, 300 years ago? Yeah. And so, for yeah. most of that timeline, it was very, very young. And so, but I mean, I just think that like you just need to be a good person who cares about your kid. Because mm. that's all kids really, really need. Like, you can be rich, you can be not rich. In Kenya, we're well off. Here, we were not as well off. That didn't mean as much to me as time with my parents. It's time with somebody who just like cares about you. And so like if you're willing to give your kid that, and, and I think kids are an absolute blessing. Hmm. And so I think absolutely, like, if you and your partner decide that's what's best for you, you should absolutely have kids. Because we need more kids. Like someone is, you know, we see all these help wanted signs. <laughs> <laughs> we need workers, man. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, and you need people because the boomers they were booming they didn't care they didn't know what a condom was they were raw dogging <laughs> hopping on a plane drinking a whiskey <laughs> all smoking pregnant people all over the place they didn't they just land the plane yeah and half the planes barely landed you know but if that generation can make it like we'll be fine you ever see the movie uh idiocracy I've never, I've never seen that. One. Oh, it's so funny, dude. The, do you know the premise of it? Uh, Anyways, walk me at through. least. Walk me through. Basically, it's just that um, um, stupid people, like over time in the future, stupid people have overpopulated the planet because they fuck more, they have more kids than <laughs> you know. They they go through like a time lapse and like they compare two families. Like one's just like fucking the neighbor and like you know <laughs> has another girlfriend. And he has like twelve kids, and it cuts to this couple that's just like we're waiting. We're our jobs. We're still in school and like all that, My and then they. God eventually split up and then she's trying to find them, you know and it basically the whole plot is like this this like average guy gets like ice frozen or whatever for how many hundreds of years and then he comes back as like and then he's like the smartest person in that whole, the whole, the whole country <laughs> that is hilarious uh, and and to answer your question I'll, I'll, i'm not gonna throw him under the bus he hates the internet or doesn't want to be on it <laughs> but a wise man that i've spoken to we both know who we're talking, talking about uh <laughs> always tells me that when he and his wife are having a kid and they did the parenting classes well they did parenting classes wow. and they went to the parenting class and they saw all the parents and his first thought was my god <laughs> these idiots are reproducing <laughs> And so, <laughs> and so, that's all I gotta say. Like, no matter, like, if you don't think you're a good parent, you're probably a better. If you're a better, if you think you'd be a better dad than Osama bin Laden, you'll be okay. Hmm. Which, yeah, I mean, he was. You know, they didn't know him as a terrorist. They just knew him as dad. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like. Kids don't care as long as you're just like they're present, yeah. provide for their basic needs and are nice to them. They don't care what you did. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean later in life they're like, oh god. <laughs> but while they're kids, you know, and so, I mean, uh, yeah, I think that's where. Uh, and again, I'm, you know, knock on wood. Hope that's what, <laughs> you know. Hope everything goes well. The pregnancy, like, yeah, yeah. I think that's gonna be my outlook. Like, I'm not looking to like make a carbon copy of me just like the best thing you can do because we all have like limited time on this earth is you know be a good person make a good person that's all they're gonna remember you know it's gonna be like oh here lies david the lawyer he got blah 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 in his bar like no <laughs> great dad you know great grandpa they're gonna who, look at that great be like what's that how do you pronounce that last yeah, name here <laughs> lies david <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> to go to mercedes <laughs> <laughs> i told you i was david muchacha at a wrestling tournament once i was, I was, I was in pella iowa no like, hey, hey david muchacha 
I'm like, you know, that's not me, but it's me. <laughs> they, they didn't even try. I'm like, you didn't even try. <laughs> like, I, I mean, I know there's Mexicans in Pella, but come on, not muchacha. Like, what are we the doing? The guy here? was Mexican, said it, right? Or no, no, it was like an old white guy. Oh, it was guy. a white guy? Yeah, he, he didn't try. That's you know, under you know, Mexican funny. would say muchacha. He'd be like, muchacha. Or something. Muchacha. <laughs> 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 I could see just like a burnt out Mexican. They're just like, hey, give, give him the mic. He's like, ah, all right, David. Ah, muchacha. Exactly. Whatever. Just punt the ball. <laughs> but uh, all right. So I wrote down some. That's right. Some wild thoughts. Just some. Uh, some, some hot takes and i'm gonna ask you this question sure mr libertarian <laughs> okay i like it why are we still in nato um because well i can go i can go back take a history lesson the reason that we're still in nato is because mm-hmm. of world war one mm-hmm. because they, i'm not like a history no, no, expert no, no, no. you're not answering my question mm. i said why are we still in it why are we still not, in nato I, I know why nato was formed i, I understand it you know, but the North Atlantic uh, something organization. Yeah. Why are we still in it? Because it serves the interests of everybody who's in power. Explain. Um, because more governments just, it's like what we were saying before, like more government equals more money, mm-hmm. um, you know, more taxation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and having something like NATO just, it continues that insurance like continues like for instance like the ukraine ish like thing right like the reason that you know we really want ukraine and nato is so we can like have more control of like the taxes on their products and that kind of thing you know um like i get the the whole point of like you know these are countries they're all divided but like all these leaders they're all the same people they just speak different languages or they you know they they just have their own geographical differences like they're all the same people um, so I mean that's why it all serves their interest, and uh, you know as as long as people continue to play into that system, they're going to keep the power. Do you think we should get out of it? <sighs> yeah, oh, 100 percent. I, I 100 percent. I think this war made me seem like, and even going to Europe, I'm like, why are we paying your bills? Why are we? And and, and I, I remember this very vividly. Like the first time Trump said it, I was like, whoa, 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 NATO, this organization. And I'm like looking yeah. at him like. That was for the Soviets. You know, like if me and Kelly were paying for you and Maui's like, or helping pay your house insurance because you had like a crazy neighbor. It was just, mm, we're always going to do it. <laughs> like, let's help him out. All right, all right. That's, you know, we love him. We'll help him out. Yeah. And then the neighbor goes away or he dies. Mm-hmm. Why are we still paying this bill? <laughs> and the time that we formed NATO... Europe was destroyed. Like it was a complete shithole. Like they just had two world wars back to back. Yeah. And like two world wars in forty years. That's like three generations getting like wrecked. You know, the ones who were old enough to kind of fight, the ones who fought in the first one, the ones who fought in the second one. And it's like, yo, we're time out. <laughs> 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 you know, it was destroyed. And then the Russians were there and so it's like, okay, let's you know, they're up there but like after that, I'm like the Europeans can handle their own stuff. The way we fight wars, they invented it. Like the guns, it was like, like <laughs> yeah. y'all. And when have the Europeans not been fighting? Yeah, always. They're always fighting. Always. So like, why do we have to get involved? We left. We're like, fuck y'all. By we, I mean, Amer- I became an American. Everybody, <laughs> uh, 2019. So we is us. Us is we. We are we. We are one. It took until 2019 for you to become yeah. an American. Yeah, I could have done it 18, but I want because my mom. When I got married, my mom, my mom had already applied for it. Yeah, it took a while. I'm not gonna go into details, but to become a U.S. citizen, I had a green card for a long time. What? When did you move to the U.S.? 2001. Holy shit! Yeah, and there was two George Bush presidencies, and then Trump. <laughs> you know, took a while, uh, but eventually we got there. But anyway, I'm just saying, like, we don't need to pay the bill for people who are fully capable of doing it themselves. But the thing is, like, going about the insurance policy thing, if I just stop paying, you're like, yo, what the fuck? Are you guys are you like paying? Like, you know, and they'll they'll feel offended, but then it's like, yo handle your shit <laughs> where's the soviet nato was against the soviet union where's the soviet union we don't have one what are you doing? <laughs> uh, like, russia has 130 million people yep 
Germany has 90, France has 70, whatever. Y'all got enough. Yeah. And if you all are getting wrecked, this is do what you did in the first war, you know, do what you did in the, all the other world wars, call daddy to come and save <laughs> yep. the day. Yep. You know, but we're not exactly. paying for it. Like, hey, handle your own stuff. If Putin's like, he's not coming here. You see any Russian naval fleets coming to New York? <laughs> or California, or they're gonna invade Alaska. You know, good job. Yeah, let's send some moose out there to stop them out. Like, <laughs> you know, but 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 like what you said, it 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 just makes money. Yep. You know, and it allows them to centralize their military and industrial complexes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because then we have NATO exercises with all these. Like, there's a reason that like the AR-15 the m4 whatever guns that the british or any nato country uses standardized rounds same bullets different calibers or different i mean different guns same bullets it makes it easier which i understand if you're in in, in, a, in an alliance but also it makes more money that way mm -hmm. you know and so like and again it just goes back to like it's such a war profiteering incentive that like we need an enemy we can't just have like the super army and no one to fight mm -hmm. like, yep. like it's There's no always it's, a it's, it's no coincidence that once we got out of afghanistan in september or, or august or september of 2021 mm -hmm. 2022 we're, we're in ukraine well, you know what happened right before Ukraine? Um, all this stuff with COVID, like, finally, like, started, like, all these states started finally unturning these laws, and, like, the whole thing started finally fizzling out. And then what, what do we have to do? Oh, Ukraine, right here. We got, the new, thing new that, we got the new thing that people are hyped about and crazed about. And, and, and they do the same shit. They're like, Vladimir Putin is an evil man who's horrible and evil and wants to eat Ukrainian children. I'm like, Wait, What? <laughs> Yep, like I haven't uh, like you got and, the first half right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I tell people, and and is he that evil or does he just want people? To oh no, he's with him? oh he's evil. I mean, I, we, I, we, I we have deals with evil people all the time. Yeah, like Joe Biden fist bumped and Trump. His first meeting was in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. They took was it um I don't know Jamal Khashoggi. They took a. You know, U.S. green card holder who'd been talking shit with the Saudi government took him to the Saudi embassy, murdered him, turned him into like ground beef, oh, and me. left with him. <laughs> and then they're like, and they're like, hey, who who did that? Like MBS, you don't think was 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 that not your embassy? Yeah, were those your boys? Yeah. <laughs> did you give the order? Fist bump, you're like, <laughs> it's like what, like so. This a narrative that we don't deal like in Saudi Arabia. They still stone people to death. Yeah, like it's not like like oh, Putin's a dictator. Like we're fighting for democracy. Saudi Arabia is not a democracy. MBS is a dictator. Yeah, just not with the first title, and and, and it's not like. When you say Putin is an evil, horrible person, like, and I'm not Putin apologist. I'm just saying, like, I don't trust what you're saying because you've been so wrong before. Because say what you want about Putin, has he ever launched a nuke? Has mm -hmm. he ever like, you know, just gone and, and and like just nuked a place? And there are people who are further right than Putin, waiting for him to leave. Like he's the new guy. He's mm -hmm. he's the new Saddam. Mm -hmm. And so you want to get rid of the. Okay, well, the thing is, they have nukes. Yeah. And he's not used them. And so we can either, one, deal with the guy that we know, or we risk the, somebody crazy than him. Exactly. Being in charge of the alarm. And I don't know about you, I'd rather deal with the person that I fucking know. Okay. Guess what? The Russian part of Ukraine might have to be Russian in order for us not to get nuked. And people are like, ooh, you know, I'm like... Shut the fuck up. Remember 2014? What were you doing, what were you doing in 2014? What was I doing? I yeah. was entering college. Okay, remember when Putin snatched up Crimea? 
Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I do actually remember. Like, I remember that happening, and like, think this is fucked up. And then, like, when all this stuff in Ukraine happened, people were saying, like, "Oh, this was an unprovoked attack." I was saying, like, "No, I actually like I remember this shit happening yeah. in 2014." But once you took Crimea, <laughs> did your life change in any way? No, 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 no not at all. Because like, Crimea was it was Turkish, and then it was Ukrainian, and then it was Russian. <laughs> yeah, it's like. Well, and the weird thing about Ukraine is there are actually a lot of people in Ukraine who want that to happen. They want Russia to come in and take their country. They do. Yeah. Like, like this whole, so, like, and just going, go, like, the reason that Putin feels like he has to do this is because once NATO, like, once the Soviet Union collapsed in 1980, 19, the wall, the wall is 89 or 91, one of those, between 89 and 91, Soviet yeah, Union's gone. Right. Russia went to shit. Because, yep. you know, and Putin was growing up doing that. And his job was, you know, his whole thing was to rebuild Russia. And one of the things that NATO agreed to was we're not going to expand NATO east towards Russia. Because the Soviet Union's gone, you know. And then we started adding countries. Started as slowly adding more countries. Now Poland is in there. Now, like, fucking, um, I don't know if Italy is in there. But, like, just slowly moving Finland. Like, just adding countries there. He's like, hey, yo, aren't you guys the alliance that hates me? So like, yeah, it's like, yeah, we just want to park our bus right across the street from you. He's like, fuck you. You guys are like the alliance that's against me, you know? And then, and, and he said this, you know? And the thing is, like, Ukraine was Russia's, like, the Soviet Union's, like, closest partner. Yeah. You know, and they give up their nukes. Lesson, never give up your nukes. But they give up their nukes. And then they had a very pro-Russian government, which that was them. They were a Soviet-influenced country. And, like, the president of Ukraine grew up, Zelensky, speaking Russian. Mm-hmm. He's, speaking, he's performed for Putin. Like, they know each other. And there's a very large, like, especially in the, on, on the eastern part of Ukraine, they're very pro-Russian. And so... In 2014, like when this whole war th- war broke out, like what happened was we had a election. The pro Russian person won because he got all the Eastern Ukrainian votes. Mm-hmm. They had a coup. They got rid of him. They had another election where they got Zelensky in there. And during that time, it was kind of when the Crimea thing happened because he's like, "You guys, fuck this shit. I'm taking Crimea." That mm-hmm. was a warning shot, and then. What happened after that is, you know, you have this Orange Revolution. They got rid of the pro, pro-Russian pro president. Pro-Russian president, but like, and then you bring in Zelensky. Zelensky came in under a platform of peace. I'm going to settle things with Russia. I'm going to have a peaceful country. After that, he became very anti-peace. Because mm. someone talked to him. <laughs> I don't know who this person <laughs> was. You know, does their name rhyme with potato? <laughs> but uh, you know, could have been. Uh, you don't know, no, but but all I'm saying is, after that, he became very, very anti, um, very anti-Russian. Passed legislation that said, "Hey, we are going to get rid of the Russian language. You're going to get rid of the Russian political parties," and so a very anti-Russian sentiment. And then the Russian parts are like, "Fuck you, we're leaving." We're gonna have our own independent, you know. We're gonna have the, you know, the Donetsk or Luhansk things. That I didn't fucking know that I've learned now. <laughs> we're gonna have our own little political, you know, our own little states that are independent of Russia and Ukraine. Ukraine said, "Fuck you, we're gonna attack you." And they're like, "Who's gonna help us?" The Russians. <laughs> and so, and so you, and so you had this like cold civil war, just like going back and forth, and then you had like the full escalation. When they were like, we want to have Ukraine into NATO, and the thing, the thing with Ukraine, Ukraine is like the Midwest, like Iowa. If you want to drive a tank across Iowa, it's not that fucking hard. You know, when Hitler invaded um, Russia through Ukraine, you know, and so like that's the path. Like they have PTSD every time Russia's been, you know, when um, what's his face, Napoleon invaded Russia mm. through Ukraine. And so, because it's very flat, it's like the most, you just I go see. through it. Yeah. And so Putin's like, fuck you, I don't want you guys <laughs> right next to me 
it's the right like it's like where have I seen this movie before? Right, right. You know, yeah. again, I'm not an apologist, but you know, like if it's like thinking like strategically, <laughs> like I would not want my enemies just literally just like a you know they have a driveway they can yeah. just drive through, and so that's when he's tried to invade and like you know didn't work as well. But now, if you see like look at the map, the Russians are in the Russian part of Ukraine. And Ukrainians are trying to take back, and they're fighting other Ukrainians who are fighting with the Russians. So it's like, oh, like if I told you the Eastern Europeans are fighting, you'd be like, yeah, that's what they fucking do. <laughs> 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 that's what they do. You know, you know, if I was like, hey, um, an African nation is fighting, you'd be like, yeah, that's what, right? <laughs> you know, oh, the Palestinians and Israelis are shooting at each other. Sounds about right. Is it like uh, I don't know a day that ends with why? Like it's it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm not gonna be overly invested in this thing. It's mm-hmm. it's, it's it's very close to civil war. Yeah. You know, what I mean, and, and it, it it is a civil war. Except for one side is backed by NATO, the other is backed by Russia. And so just like, why am I involved? Exactly. Exactly. Like, if we leave NATO, guess what? It's Europeans fighting Europeans. Yeah. Not you America know? has nothing to do like, with what it. We gotta do with this, like. Exactly. You know, but th- that that's my Ukraine rant. Yeah. Um I before we go on, I gotta take a piss. Yeah, so you're good, you're we'll good. take a break and then we'll come right back. Sounds good. All right guys, we're back in Cowstars Podcast with Yeah yeah David. <laughs> so what's up, man? Uh yeah, no, okay. So we did the whole Ukraine thing. We solved Ukraine. So, so <laughs> we solved we it. We have figured out a piece We're just gonna plan. clip that, send it to Joe Biden, <clears> be like, like, Hey, hey yo, we just, this is how we this, do it. This is a game plan. Yeah. Uh <laughs> When, <laughs> all right. So you talked a about raising a family. If you could, since especially you guys are not pregnant right now, <laughs> uh, at least as far as I know, we're not. <laughs> Definitely not. You better so, not be. <laughs> in this climate and culture that we are currently in, mm-hmm. would you rather have a boy or a girl? <sighs> um, probably a boy. Fan. Um, I think with a the boy, there's uh, well, I guess here's the thing: they're they're worse when they're earlier, and that part would suck. But I think there's less um, there's less weirdness. I think with like a boy, like you don't really have to worry about like people like coming in on your daughter and like doing creepy shit. Like, yeah, I guess that can't that can happen to your son in this day and age. Maybe. Well, I don't really know if it's even more than what it was back then maybe it's just more talked about but like i don't know i think i think i would feel safer about that okay. and like he's probably more likely to defend himself mm-hmm. um he's probably smart no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> Silly <girl. laughs> um but yeah i mean that's that's probably my answer. i i have a lot i do have like a lot of worry and fear about like i think about that like raising a daughter and having to navigate that whole thing of like there's just a whole there's a whole sexual predatory nature to having a daughter that you have to deal mm-hmm. with as a parent versus like m- more likely i guess than like a son mm-hmm. and i i worry about that a lot see and again i'm not giving anything away here all right this is just purely <laughs> hypothetical you've premeditated on both genders uh, quite a bit i know? think right now this is like the way we're structured I would rather have a daughter. I think having a daughter is easier. Right now, they have they have like a, a better mm. path than men overall. Think, that's for sure. I think the stat sheet. Like, I mean, would you rather be a, you know, growing up in twenty twenty three, you want to be you know, born a white boy or a white girl? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's now. not even a question. <laughs> But choose your own character. Like, hey, uh, yo, put me on the girl train. Because cause, cause even if you're on the girl train, you can still switch to the boy train if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> you can change tickets. <laughs> you can change seats. <laughs> switch trains. Uh, but no, honestly, I mean, I think that like white men, like the perfect time was like 1950 to 65. Yeah. It's like peak white guy. You know, you, go, you watch an NBA game, all white dudes. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, the leading none of them scorer, are dunking either. <laughs> the leading scorer was this dude. And I looked this up today. His name was Robert E. Lee. Which is hilarious. Pettis. 
<laughs> it's just it, hilarious that his fame, name is Robert E. Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and he went by Bob Pettis, but we know where you from. He X that out. He was we like, know where you. you're from, Robert. It's a fortunate timing on uh, that name. Yeah. What's that tattoo under your jersey? <laughs> <laughs> but even then, even then, you know, 1950, if you're racist, so. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, no big deal. Uh, you know, and you go to a job, like, yeah, can I just. Yeah, of course you can have this job. You're the most qualified. Why? Yeah. All the other people are dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, people of color can't play the game. You know, so it's, it's, a, it's a, you know, but now, I mean, I think, I think it's not so much a pendulum swing, but it can feel like it because no one feels bad for you. So you just, you just handle your own shit. There's mm. no like, you know, and so having a boy, I think it's it's a less clear path. And yeah. I, I've seen this where, even like with students, like, you know, you have your female students, hey, just go to class, do the things, do the things. And, you know, turn your homework and, yeah, they get together. And they do that. Mm-hmm. Like, colleges are like 61, 39. Oh, it's gone up that it's much now? Up, it's wow. 2021. Wow. Like, I didn't realize it went that high. Yeah. 6139. So yeah, basically 6040. Yeah. Yeah. Because cool, it was 5545 yeah. for a while. Which, which is hilarious when you and 6040 doesn't sound like a lot, which is like until you oh, say it's a, it uh, when you look at it from what yeah. it's been like 10 20 years ago, it's a lot. Yeah, it's like yeah. a 10% change. Uh, and and I like to give this people's perspective. I'm like the NFL is 59% black. <laughs> <laughs> So, women are more represented in college than brothers in the NFL. There's no petition. There, there's no society. We need more black men in the NFL because it's just like you know. You know, I always had this thought about like how <coughs> like white women are just ruling the world because mm-hmm. you know they were down in society and now they're back up and now they're they're marrying black men and they're put bringing black men to clean up the dishes in the kitchen while they're just sitting there. Like, whoa, <laughs> on their whoa, phone whoa, whoa. Is that a phone. shot at me? <laughs> you taking a shot at me? That felt personal, Coleman. What? Is this a thought you're, you're, or just, you're one of the righteous ones? Or, 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 or you, an, you know your this shit. This is a thought or an observation, but no, I mean, because <laughs> now. Not only are white women like taking the patriarchy, they can become white men. <laughs> like, that is the ultimate. Like that's the by whenever they want to. It's like you're, you're just just. <laughs> and so if I had a daughter, I'd be like, yo, the world is yours. Do with it as you believe. Like like just uh, you can you can literally be whatever you want. You know, though, I think they're going to get hijacked by AI, honestly. Like, well, because I think a big part, and this might be a controversial statement, but I think a big part of why... um, We don't say controversial. (laughs) A big part of why there's a surge with women is like, um, A, well, I mean, kind of the you know, natural inclinations. Like, they're kind of just naturally smarter at school and kind of just are designed... Like, their brains are generally in a, made in a way that they're, like, going to succeed in the modern world that mm-hmm. we're in. But also, I think part of it is because they have that natural sexuality that, um, you know... Is, you, that, you know, it's the it's the age old thing that you know sex sells, right? Yeah. But I think there's going to be a point where um, with AI. AI is going to be able to create artificial sexual images, people, accounts... Etc. And that's actually going to hijack um, females. You think these fake gamer girls are going to take over <laughs> everything from women? And so I'm telling you, man, watch Idiocracy. The next female president is going to be a fucking OnlyFans chick. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. Uh, I mean, and I mean, I can kind of see it both ways, but. I definitely think the way we structure school and education in this country, just in general, it's, hey, follow the rules. Yeah. Do these things. And by and large, I think, you know, and this is a generalization. Like, if you go to any country in the world, ask the teachers, who are your troubled kids? Probably the boys. They're men. Yep. You know, and who are, you know, your really responsible favorite students? 
mostly women. And statistics back this up across the board. And especially everything like post 1960s, women started doing better than men in high school. Mm. The opportunity wasn't there as much, but like as far as like their the things that we asked them to do, they're better at doing it. You know. Well, yeah, that was the thing. Liberalism like brought about higher education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 by and large, I mean, I think it's very liberating. It's very empowering. Mm-hmm. Until yeah. you get to this point where it's like now, because we're doing good, let's look down on men. Or mm-hmm. it's or it's we're still in the patriarchy when you're like yeah doing but like 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 and, and I can kind of see it you know you know it's like hey did we did we solve racism in America is this a totally like racial utopia no <laughs> well, what we did is we raised the price on being a racist so high mm-hmm. that people will go out of their minds to not even like be labeled yeah that like you'll see the video of like you know three black kids shoplifting yeah and the reporter is like there were these three (laughs) teenage youths who had no other activities (laughs) to do and it's not their fault it's the fault of the system it's like they're reporting from inner city chicago uh, they're like (laughs) meanwhile in kenya they're like these three black (laughs) motherfuckers stealing because you know like like yeah and and, and, but even the idea of appearing race or appearing sexist yeah is like we haven't solved the issue, but like you have so much more recourse that like people will go out of their minds mm-hmm. not to be, you know, like I don't know, some people who don't want to work on teams with women where it's one on one. Just cause how that could be interpreted. Mm. If they make somebody uncomfortable. Which is a good thing. But then it also takes away opportunities to collaborate. Yeah. You know? And so, but, and is it a good thing that people are way less racist? Absolutely. Yeah, it's a good 100%. thing that people are, you know, not like, oh, yeah, here's Jill. Ass laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> She's a new secretary. <laughs> Look how hot she is. <laughs> <laughs> she got all Fs in high school. <laughs> She's not. You know, but, but it's, we're at, a, we're at or better. <laughs> But I mean, overall, society's at a better place. And I think that's a good thing. But I think we're at this very close line where we go from, like, say, you know, you're a young woman, you go to college, or say you're a black person, and you grow up in this country, and then you get to, like, you know, middle class level, upper upper middle class, you're doing well. And that's, like, what do I have to fight against? It's like... If, yeah. you, if you believe what everyone's telling you, you know, America's a racist, evil country, is evil and racist. America says country that's sexist. If you go outside, someone's going to grab you. Like, then what do you do? Yeah. You know, and then you start looking around, but then all your friends are kind of thinking the same thing. And so it's, it's a very weird place that we're in. Cause like, mm-hmm. we didn't like, and, and like solving racism is like, can we solve poverty? Can we solve crime completely? No. No. It's impossible. But what you can do, you can really raise a price on crime. And people are like, you know, I'm not going to go and shoplift today because I don't want to go to jail because jail mm-hmm. sucks. Which is the opposite of what's happening. It's like, you know, like in California, when you just say, hey, anything under $500, we're not going to prosecute. How much does PS5 cost? <laughs> Four ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if those if those are the lines, like people will get as close to the line as you let them. Yeah. You know, they'll get right up there, and if you let them, you know, and 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 some people are gonna go past it, but then if you move the line back to anything over a hundred dollars or anything over like if you're shoplifting, ten dollars. Mm-hmm. we'll prosecute you and it's like okay i'm not really you know because the price has gone up and so like the amount of like you can't just be in the office saying a racist shit you know mm-hmm. again it's not the 1950s you know 
<laughs> peak white guy is past. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. You know, watch Mad Men. <laughs> you know, if you're going to relive it, watch Mad yeah. Men. You know, oh, if, it, I, if you're a white guy, it'd be a great time. Great, uh, great, great. I do time. every night. I took at least one episode. Just of Mad like, Mad man. <laughs> Those are the good old days. <laughs> Walk around like Joe Biden sniffing women's hair. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> but uh, uh, you know Trump could just you know. <laughs> I don't even finish that one. <laughs> but I mean, it's a different time, you know. Yep. And so like you know, and you're like, you know what? What do y'all think about this new black guy, David? I don't really like him. You, you can't say that anymore, you know. Mm. You know, in the office. But and so I mean, I think things have changed, but I also think that there's such an incentive to s- need something to fight against like yes yes the dog that caught the car and it's like well why am i barking at you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like you exactly you enjoy the chase mm-hmm. more than actually the thing to it because like, you want equality we have equality like yeah is, we're past equality like, most lawyers graduate now women accountants women veteran like med school women um, vet school. Iowa State advertises the number of men in their college. <laughs> <laughs> that should tell you something. <laughs> uh, and especially from someone who's married to somebody who is like, it, it, you know, I mean, like the vet school, I mean, there's what, five veterinarians in the family, four veterinarians? Yeah. But it's changed. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> we should at least acknowledge mm-hmm. forward progress. You know, it might not be in the end zone, but the ball's not the 20-yard line. We have moved the ball yeah, sure. forward. And everyone's like, look how far that we have to go. And then it's like, okay, well, now we're at the one-yard line. Well, we're at the, you know, we're yeah, at the 300-centimeter yeah. line. <laughs> it's like, <what? laughs> yeah, you're moving the goalpost. So. It's interesting, though. There is the kind of point where it's problematic, though, right? Like, um, there's a. Uh, I remember one time I was flipping through these like streaming services uh, shows, and one of the shows was uh, Black Millionaires. And I was kind of like, like, are millionaires like generally like good people? Are these people that we like, <laughs> mall after in society? You yeah. Know? <laughs> like, if they were a white millionaire, they'd be the biggest piece of shit ever. But because they're black, we're gonna like so break them. Out. Okay. Yeah, as know. if, as if there's no other black men. Like, like, yeah. And I get it. Like, it's something like you can only aspire to what you see. You know, mm. like there's not very many American kids who grow up and they want to be cricket players. Why? Well, I don't care about cricket. <laughs> so much more. But there's a billion Indian kids who see that and they're like, oh, "That's what I want to do." Yeah. You know. And so if you, so, I, I I get the whole. You know, you need representation thing. You need representation thing, but don't force it. Yeah, you f- I agree. force it. It's awkward. Like in the nineties, like we had you no know, Will Smith. Don't be stopping people. But you know, you, got, <laughs> you, know you, you know Will Smith. You know Martin Lawrence. You have you know um, Denzel. Like all these like really great black actors that I didn't really think of as just black actors. Mm-hmm. Like, Grom Ken's like, he's an American actor. Yeah, yeah. You know, Samuel L., American actor. Yeah, exactly. You know, it is really fucking good. <clears throat> but now it's like, well, we need to make sure that we have a black, lesbian, pansexual, <laughs> overweight person to make, like, and then it's just like, oh, what are we doing? And, yeah. and, 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 and like, I don't want to sound like a red pill person. Like, even like, you don't like you can there's so many gr- great it's a slippery african yeah, stories that are not told yeah and we're just like let's let's mm, do the yeah, let's exactly. do the little mermaid with dreads Mm-hmm. i know that story we had uh infamous goats through here and they made that exact same point like there was like the harriet tubman movie that like just came out and nobody even gave, gave a fuck about it yeah. but like everybody's freaking out for black panther and you know yeah. the like the black little mermaid or whatever yeah. or you know find actually like, you know, black people lived on the coast too and had their own stories. Mm-hmm. Like the Little Mermaid is like it's a Nordic tale because mm-hmm. that's what they were doing. They're all on the coast. Like everyone who's on the coast has their own mermaid story, or like because that's all you know. That's all you know. The mm-hmm. ocean is scary, and so you make up <laughs> stories, and then it's like, oh, this person survived. Like, you know, like you know, or people who live in the desert. Like read some of like the. Um, 
like the Middle Eastern tales. Like it's like that's like, you're all you see is sand. And so you come up with stories for that. And so like there's so many untold stories where he's like, let's rinse and repeat, but tweak it. And now this what if the little mermaid was black? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> She's a black. Then what? <laughs> I think they're at the point now where they just have a list of the stereotypes and they're just like, we're going to cross all these. You know, I, I think. <laughs> First one, we can swim. Yeah. Or what if like the people of Austria made a Jesse Owens movie? <laughs> He's a white guy. <laughs> like. I mean, like, you can't, like, and I and I get it. You want to be represented in things that's familiar, but you can also, like, you get to choose mm-hmm. what the thing is now. The Little Mermaid came out in 1996. And who, like, and there's no new writers? Yeah. Or Snow White and the seven people who are <laughs> specials in different ways? <laughs> you know, because, like, you know, which also took a, jobs a lot of, from a lot of people but like overcorrection is a big issue because like yeah and i'm saying if you go all the way left you go right you go mm-hmm. all the way right you go left and so you have to find a nice middle ground and live in the world that you're in and yeah. also don't live in the time that you're in like bill Maher says all the time like i can't grade you based on 2023 standards if you lived in the 1850s yeah because <laughs> like as a kid you're born in the world that just is, this is the world yeah. that i'm in yeah your you entire know? sense of morality is based yeah. on your yeah. the same way upbringing. that like kids right now in you know the elementary school there don't know a world without wi-fi at home all the time mm-hmm and you go to 1850 they don't know a world without like not wi-fi all the time like this is yeah. this is just it you know and so like i i can't grade you and judge you on because that's all you know mm-hmm. like you that this is your world and like the same way that i would not want to be judged by 2000 you know whatever 93 standards now you know like, saying wild shit <laughs> this is all i know like i yeah. you know and like humans don't live that long history remembers yeah. everything but it's really important to like judge people in the world that they're in and also like understand meet people where they're at and people can change yeah like people like and that's the one thing that i really hate was like you said a bad thing in 2006 therefore you should be canceled forever <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Who hasn't said something bad in 2006? Said horrible <laughs> shit all the time. Because <laughs> yeah. I was a dumb kid. And you know, I am a less dumb adult. <laughs> and that's and that's how it's supposed to go. That yeah. is the natural progression of things. You know, there's a reason we don't lock up sixth graders for being assholes. <laughs> you know, and like throwing a tantrum and pissing on the locker. I'm not going to send them to jail. If you're an adult, maybe. But, like, you got shit going on (laughs) when you're a kid. Like, so preserve that innocence. Yeah. Um, Kids are stupid. Yeah. So, (laughs) uh, one last question before I ask my last question. Uh, Why is Rhode Island a state and not Puerto Rico? Like, like, the question for me. For you. My, um... Probably, I mean, probably just like the difference of time, right? I mean, Rhode Island was founded in the early, or God, I'm gonna sound like an idiot. It was, it was one of the natties. It was one of the yeah natty thirteen pack. Yeah, important. I mean, I I, I guess <laughs> oh, the natty thirteen. <laughs> I guess like it was easier for America to drive out the Indians in that time versus like in 1950 when we wanted to have Puerto Rico be a state. Mm-hmm. You know, well, why can't we get one now? <laughs> because Puerto Ricans aren't Americans till they land in America. There's too much uh, incentive to uh, like uh, save money on taxes and shell. The rich people want to preserve I think. that because they know once it's a state that 
they're they're going to pay taxes on that. So so you know how Nashville is like the new like East Las Vegas. I have not heard that. No, Nash- Nashville is wild. It's damn it's crazy. Prostitution legal there yet? Not yet. It's still a southern state, but <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the way they do prostitution is they just have lots of bachelorette parties and then the girls mm. don't care. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's kind of free, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And therefore, it's not pro- it's not illegal. Yeah, or you know? morally wrong. You know, it's not illegal. <laughs> hey, hey, adult women can make their own choices. Yep. You know, just get consent. All you get consent. Yeah, paying a bill is not the same as yeah. giving them cash. <laughs> 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 but I mean, having a uh, not like so in Nashville can be like East Las Vegas. We need an East Hawaii. <laughs> we need a Puerto Rico. Because, I mean, the other Hawaii burnt down. So we need a new one. <laughs> you know, and, cause Joe, and, and Joe Biden, he tried. He gave him $700. <laughs> Set for the people of Maui or whatever the hell they got fucking burnt down. He gave him $700. Oh, a pop or total? A person. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Which, is, which is a lot. You know, yeah. if this house burns down and I give you $700, we're even. <laughs> if your dogs die in a fire I'm like hey yo I feel really bad here's 700 bucks hey I mean that covers uh, the pet deposit also you know? I gotta grab my giant 2 billion dollar bag and drag it to Ukraine <laughs> sorry bro uh, but I think what we should what should happen is Massachusetts or somebody just annex Rhode Island it's the size of a football field it's tiny just incorporate that into your state, and Puerto Rico becomes a state. <laughs> like if Rhode Island disappeared or became a part of Massachusetts, it doesn't <laughs> change at all. It doesn't change at all. You know, and that way the conservatives are happy. Like, well, the Senate map, really, it's okay. You probably be liberal anyway. So you're training a liberal state for a liberal state. <laughs> you know, the math. I, I've done the math. It works out. <laughs> Puerto Rico. Is Puerto Rico liberal? I would think they'd be more conservative. They're pretty liberal. Hmm. They're pretty liberal. I guess it's pretty popular. Yeah, I mean, people of Populous. color. And, and, and we have, we're adding more people of color hmm. to America. Yeah. Liberals, oh, be happy. True, true. Uh, be happy. What, how many black people live in Rhode Island? Six? <laughs> Twelve? Maybe? Hmm? Uh, and half of them are play for their New England Patriots. <laughs> huh? Like, come on now. Like, it, it, I think it's a fair trade. And you get East Hawaii. <laughs> so when that one's on fire, trade off. Easy. I like it, man. Let's See you no. Okay. Um, all right. So who's who's gonna win the, uh, the election? Yeah. We're gonna run it back. Okay. The, um, the grandpa bowl. Uh, my prediction, uh, I don't know. I think if it was a fair, if it was a fair election, it would be RFK Jr. Um, yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Why do you think it would be it, it wouldn't be unfair. So okay, so here's um, here's something that's going on right now. Um, I apologize for my voice. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I want to be president. I love RFK, by the way. <laughs> oh, you do? Yes. Hell yeah. That's hell, what I got. Hell yeah. Fuck RFK yeah. all the way. He's hell yeah. The, 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 the. Well, that's what I was gonna say because um, I've recently heard that they're trying to just the DNC is trying to do it where you have to vote for Joe Biden. You think the DNC is democratic? Well, they they were represent them politically. I mean, that's who that's who Joe Biden is. That's who represents Joe Biden, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, you think the Freedom Caucus represents freedom? No, no, but the, that's and, what. And, and, and I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not no, but that's what. I'm, you. That's what. No, you're fine. No, that's yeah. what I'm saying though. Is that they're they're um, not letting RFK get through? Yeah, they're gonna just say you can't vote for RFK if you cast a Democratic vote vote or. Um, if you uh, cast primary. primary, it goes to... It goes to automatically to Joe Biden. Yeah. So if they do that, um, RFK doesn't have a chance. Yeah, because which is sad. the and then after Democratic that, Party is... In their primaries, they're the least Democratic. 
Yeah. And this is not me being a shell for the Reds. I don't like the Reds. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. But because, so Bernie brought this up in 2016. Hmm. Because Bernie won West Virginia. Yeah. And got one delegate. And he's like, this is bullshit. It's not democratic. And then they had to argue this in court. And the DNC, they said, well, we are a political committee. These are our rules. And we can decide who wins. Yeah. Because and the DNC, they don't only have delegates. Yeah. They have super delegates. Yeah. Which yeah, is, yeah. you know, all delegates are equal. <laughs> well, some delegates are more yeah. equal than others. And then a week later, Bernie Sanders was like, I Wait. support Hillary Clinton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, uh, yeah and then, like, we're super democratic. You know, or when Bernie's making noise in 2020, and they're like, yeah. mm, listen up, Pete. <laughs> listen up, Amy Klobuchar, whatever your name is, or everybody yeah. else. A fairly <laughs> decent candidates for the Democratic yeah. Party, by the way. Yeah, and Obama picked up his phone and was like, yo. <laughs> This is Joe Biden's. You get me? And then, you My know, white dad. <laughs> <laughs> Lil Pete. Mm, Lil Pete, the guy who took paternity leave for an adopted kid, which is hilarious. <laughs> you know, I mean, no 1950s white man would have done this. You know? Uh, you know so, yeah, in the 50s, you had a kid, you got to work the next day. So, yeah. yeah. My wife had a baby. It's fine. So, you, you want to support her for what? She's, she made the baby. She should raise it. Simple. Uh, but it's such a rigged system. And, and and the thing is, the RNC, they don't like Trump. Mm-hmm. But the way they rules Ramsaway are written. Away or whatever that guy's name Ramas, is. Ramaswamy. 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 Never even heard of this guy. Yeah. And he's like, he's like the Pete Buttigieg of the right. Yeah, he's, yeah. They're very similar. Like, literally, him and Pete were at the same, like, MSNBC. I don't think so. Mm, they're all kind Might of Might be. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I meant publicly. Uh, I mean, Obama in his writings is like, I can't fantasize about this. I was like, you know? I mean, like, if you just say everyone's a little bit gay, okay. it's okay. It's not a surprise. You know, that'll surprise you. Uh, but uh, t- look at Bohemian Grove. Everybody's a little gay. Yeah, you have to be. <laughs> yeah, I got your lines, you know. Uh, but and so, and so you end up with this thing where it's just like even the RNC they don't want Trump, but he just steamrolling because mm-hmm. it's open, and it's like the DNC is like, and and I was, I was watching. Um, what was I watching? I think it was um, the Hill, mm. and. They're, they were interviewing this DNC guys like ha, ha, there's no primary Joe Biden's you know if we force the people to choose between Trump and Biden it's like yo he was saying, saying that force publicly? yeah God, I'm, damn. I'm, I'm just like you what if the Democratic Party asked the Democrats <laughs> yeah who I mean, they want to like, well the, there's no one else running it's like there's RFK yeah there's Marianne Williamson oh, and Sixty-seven percent of registered Democrats want another choice. That is a super majority. That is enough to get anything to the Senate. Yeah. If that was a bill, it'd go through. Why? So, well, we don't. And, and thing is, I, I love polls <laughs> because yeah. everyone believes polls until they don't back them up. I'm like, who does these polls anyway? Like when, when Joe Biden was winning, he's like, yeah, yeah, the polls are showing me I'm beating Trump. I'm the best candidate. You know, and then I don't trust these polls. Yeah, no, I oh fuck the polls, man. I don't trust them either. Uh, no, no, but I'm saying everyone trusts them until they're against you. Yeah, if oh, they're yeah. for you. Yep. You're like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Look 100%. at the polls. Look at the polls. I'm mm-hmm. the best. Yep. The people want me. <laughs> and then it's like, well, the polls are no, the no, the polls are wrong. They don't know anything. Which again, the polls can go either way. They just polls. But you know what really works? asking people yeah hey do you want a other choice for the democratic party or more cowbell and the democrats like anybody but biden like, but, but then they do this thing where they like 
corner themselves. Yep. It's like, yep. Biden or Harris? Like, well, th- that's why I can't even like when you ask me like who I think is going to be president, I can't even really say because it's not going to be RFK, but I know it's going to be the Democratic Party because they just win every time apparently. Um, and like, I can't think of a can't. It's not going to be Biden. He's not going to make it. It's not going to be Kamala Harris. They don't want her. I can't think of who it's going to be. Uh, Gavin is sitting and he's lurking. That's true. It could, but he did fuck up really bad during COVID. It'll just it'll be interesting to see how people according remember to that who, or not. according to normal people, or according to that's Democrats. true. That's very true. Have you got your 18th vaccine? <laughs> well, you know, and that's the thing that's really interesting about I this whole thing. Really right? I get vaxxed <laughs> daily. You think this is wine I'm drinking? <laughs> <laughs> it's just straight vaccine. <laughs> That was like the video of the teacher who was giving it, giving her kid the COVID vaccine. Oh God! Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the answer, clearly, clearly, and it's also super racist <laughs> to assume that Chinese people can mess up in a lab. That's so racist as fuck. But if you want to believe that Chinese people eat pangolins in a wet market and that caused COVID, yeah, that makes sense. You know, I think it was amazing how it became socially acceptable to ask people if they got vaccinated. Yeah. You know, like, if you had asked any black person 20 years ago if they got vaccinated, like, how racist that would come off as. <laughs> you know what I mean? You but know, now it's like, oh. who was the last to take the vaccine? A lot of black people. Yeah. <laughs> but they didn't say that. <laughs> They're like, oh, it's, 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 um, it's, 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 it's fuck the stats. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a white drugger. Look at the white truckers. <laughs> He's like, yo, I've had COVID. I sit in my truck 20 hours a day. He was like, you need to get vaxxed. It's like, shut No. <laughs> I just, you know, the next, the next pandemic, you know who I'm going to trust? Grandmothers. <laughs> Not some fucking 24-year-old doctor struggling too much to please his immigrant parents. I'd be like, you know, how do I spot this? But yeah, I mean, does it really kill kids? I've seen pandemics. Like, by the time you're like 80, you've seen a bunch of shit. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. Like, and the thing is, like, viruses, they don't hide. Mm-hmm. They don't tell you what, like, we know what Ebola does. We know what the flu does. Like, it's just, just like, yeah. Like, we know who's going after it because we just look around there. The f- Ebola is killing everyone, or the flu is killing a bunch of kids. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, but at some point, like, was it the Spanish flu? Stop being Spanish. <laughs> it became the flu. <laughs> yeah. And COVID is just going to just become a fucking regular ass coronavirus. Yep. Which is, and then now it's going to be like, wait, you're telling me that people get sick in the winter? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's called this fucking circle of life. Like, yeah. everyone knows this shit. Yeah. You know, and then it's like, no, we need more vax, more vax, like mm-hmm. made by your trusted friends yeah. <laughs> at Purdue Pharma. <laughs> the same people who kill every doxycodone. Yeah. Yep. We should trust Moderna. Yeah. <laughs> because Moderna stock, which I owned, <laughs> was $16 in 2019. <laughs> Shit came up to 365. Oh my god. You think they wanted COVID to end? <laughs> like, if you, again, if we are at the McAllister weapons munition plant and the World War II is going on, you know what you don't want to fucking end? The war. <laughs> That's how you make your fucking money. Like, what do you do? We make munitions. <laughs> Yeah, it's so easy too, and like it's it's almost too easy, yeah. right? It's almost too easy to the point where people are like going to reject you, like they're going to be forced to reject you because mm-hmm. they're like, this doesn't sound smart. But it's like it, it but it is because it's so fucking simple. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know I mean? and, and 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 here's one of the things that made me lose my fucking mind is because like if you go back and look at any of the CDC people, mm-hmm. none of them released any recommendations of what any like strict guidance on what to do any medication you can take yeah if you have covid because in order to get emergency use authorization 
there has to be no commonly yep. agreed way to deal with this except for the vaccine which is how we justify emergency use and not testing it as much yeah exactly and because if there was go back to the whole legal shit like, like hey, it's not an emergency if there's fire hydrant right there use a, use a fire hydrant there's no fucking <laughs> fire extinguisher or hydrant <laughs> cover it up there's none just throw it away well, that was where all the hype around ivermectin came from, right? Yeah, like that was why no, like that's why it was you had so to shut it down because it had it, it was beyond the point where it could be patented. It was it was like free domain. If it was use, even essentially. plausible that it could be a potential treatment, mm-hmm. because then if there's a treatment, then let's try that before we declare an emergency. Yep. You know, but and you don't make your money if there's no fire extinguishers. We have to use the axe that we just bought, and they got fucking everything. <laughs> and that's the same thing. Like, then we've already put in all this money. Like, there's no other care. And yeah. that's why no one mentioned anything about the health risks. No one said anything about you know, like being overweight was a factor. Like, mm. nothing. shut the fuck up. Yep. There's nothing. Mm-hmm. But the vaccine. And then DJ Kelly that shit. <laughs> another one <laughs> what what's the what's the cure to covid another one <laughs> super vax ultra vax <laughs> get vax so much i want half your blood like what uh, is your blood vaccine content right now <laughs> they pull you over for a, a, co- a <laughs> vaccine alcohol check. Yeah. You have a breathalyzer. Yeah, it's like, it's like, hey, 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 let me get a little prick for your finger. Let me see how much vax you got in there. Oh, Ooh, you're low. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> so what? <laughs> you stay vaxxed, man. That's uh, too funny. Uh, but I mean, and that's where you and it's kind of bring this full circle. Mm-hmm. That's where you kind of see like the government will do not whatever it wants whatever makes money mm. because again everyone is the cdc like fauci was a highest paid government employee he was on boards of a bunch of pharmaceutical companies that's where he makes it real money you know and it's just and it, it, it's it's a bilateral transaction mm-hmm. it's like hey look that's our guy hey look he's our guy well, let's all make money together. And I think that's the biggest thing. That, that was the biggest eye-opener of, like, you can help people if you want to. Mm-hmm. The government can help people if they really, really wanted to or if we forced them to. But if they can just make more money shipping cluster bombs <laughs> to Ukraine guaranteeing that the last casualty of the war has not been born yet you know there'll be some fucking ukrainian or russian kid 20 years from now who's like digging with his grandpa and hits a fucking leftover cluster bomb brought to you by raytheon <laughs> <laughs> and then like, the, like, like and, and that's how the shit fucking goes and so like that's what's maybe being very just like if not rfk Then it's either a, then it's probably a fuck you vote. Yep. And there's this guy. Th- that's the other thing, right? Like, I think at the end of the day, the Democrats will win because Democrats vote for dead people. Like, Democrats are a special view they will vote for literally anybody. More cowbell. <laughs> exactly. This, More cowbell. This is the, listen, Coleman, you don't understand. We have searched the entire country for one single democrat candidate to take the mantle from joe biden and you know who it is it's joseph biden <laughs> <laughs> do you know who is better than the oldest president ever <laughs> older <laughs> more count. Like, you are like you are either like delusional or incompetent. Imagine if I hired you as like my NFL scouting guy. You come back, you're like, hey, got your quarterback. Like, okay, let's see it. 
He's six four. Bet, bet, bet. Strong arm. Okay, okay, okay. What's his name? Brett Favre. I'm like, what? D A I. Yup. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> You've had four years. You had four years, and you bring me Brett Favre. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. Exactly. I hope they get what they want. I I hope they get what they deserve. <laughs> uh, but no, no, I'm sorry. I cut you off. No, you you're totally that. fine. No, I mean, because because I do see the scenario of there being a fuck you vote. But I just I, we've seen it twice already, where we thought there was going to be a red wave, both in 2020 and 2022, and it just did not happen. And I think we'll probably see. I think it's just a cultural shift. I think we'll probably that'll probably be something that's going to be reoccurring. Honestly, I mean, I think the fuck you vote has more backing now, especially if the person. That's what really depends on the people. Yeah. But I mean, again, the RNC is open. Like, (laughs) they're having debates. The DNC is not having debates. Yeah. Because, again, their candidate is the most steady person. Bidenomics. Are you feeling Bidenomics? Do you feel the Biden? I, I feel Bidenomics when I put gas in my car. I'm like, mm. I am a believer, David. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> I'm just biding my time. <laughs> like, and, and I was in Europe, and like, these are the people. That you've chosen, I'm like, yep, to lead your country, the greatest on earth. <laughs> like, it's 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 a crazy time to be alive, cause cause then we have to explain to our kids why we did this. <laughs> hey, why the fuck? Like, have you ever laughed and cried at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> that was what it was like oh, for like, a decade and a half. Gosh, like, you know what would be like a great like final event? The two oldest guys. Yeah. To you know, head off UFC 200. Like, what about UFC 300? The same two old guys. <laughs> like, what the fuck are we watching here? Like, who chose <laughs> this? We don't want this. And then that thing that pissed me off the most, like, Nobody wants this. Yeah, yeah. But the parties do. Because mm-hmm. Uncle Joe, hey, go say some shit. All right, go sleep. We got we have, Raytheon needs some money. And Trump just throws him off. He's like, "Why the fuck were you NATO?" <laughs> They're like, like, "I don't." How can you ask that question? It's like, why are we paying more? Like, why am I paying more for your house insurance than you are? Yeah. Exactly. It's like, well, well, I mean, that's just how it's always been. <laughs> yeah, fucking okay. Well, why don't we have slaves? It's like, oh, well, <laughs> that's how it, that's how it was, <laughs> but that's not how it's gonna be, huh? Ask my man Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> uh, he's like, hey, they're like, what do you mean? We always say, well, not anymore. We're not doing that shit anymore. It's just, it's, no, we're not doing it. It's like, well, but but NATO, we need it's like. Shut up. NATO is like 60 years old. Yeah. You don't need that shit. What were we doing? Fine. Remember, remember when World War II happened? Yeah. Did anyone <laughs> bomb Des Moines? Did anyone attack New York? <laughs> Pearl Harbor, RIP. Yeah. But we knew the Japanese said, well, well, and, and they got there. Did you not <laughs> drop two fucking nukes on them? Did you not just uh-huh. see Oppenheimer? <laughs> uh, are they good now? Uh, do we get them back or not? Uh, how do you know more nukes got to drop? We dropped <laughs> they killed two thousand. We killed two hundred thousand. What fucking bar? What fucking bar? Don't fuck with us. So let's just chill here. There's two fucking oceans between us, and we're good. Uh, Europe, y'all been fighting forever. That's what y'all do. That's what y- y'all took like a hundred years off, and you're like, let's just go take over everybody else. And y'all did, and then y'all like went back to fighting each other. Like they literally colonize the entire world. And like, what should we do now? You know, fight each other? Yeah, let's do that. Like, <laughs> it's re- so. Like, why should we be involved? Y'all do your thing. Yeah, I agree. War is your thing. Europeans enjoy that shit. 
I agree. Uh, live and let live. I think, uh, you know, libertarian-minded people like ourselves uh, believe that. That's the core of it, right? Yeah. Treat others the way you want to be treated, just, and, you know, live and let live. Yeah. Uh, David, we've bar- already gone. I feel like we've been at the two-hour we, mark. We, we, we've oh, been at it way for a We're at the yeah. way past two-hour mark. Yeah. Uh, we, we've said a lot, but is there any last words you want to say or anything you want? I, I, you don't really you know have like a lot of like outside stuff you know outside job stuff but anything you want to plug or you know uh, just promote not too much uh i will shout out my brother tbm entertainment yes if you are uh looking for a wedding my brother does a fantastic job he's done events as big as three four thousand people oh, wow. to a little you know small humble wedding um company's growing it's you know grown five times as much since last year so i do want to plug in tbm entertainment tbm entertainment and other than that i mean i'm glad to be on the pod it's a great time great yeah. talk um be good people read <laughs> read don't just listen to us podcasters we talk shit <laughs> on a great time but also read like there's nothing like that and vote with your mind like mm. there's so much emotional shit so much emotional stuff but vote with your head Look, look at what you're voting for. Think with your head, not with your cock. Not with your cock. <laughs> yeah. Or if you are, get it snipped. And then, <laughs> then you only have one head. <laughs> one head is better than two. <laughs> Most of the time. Yes. Or ask your wife. There you or go. your wife's boyfriend. No <laughs> guy. Uh, David, I love you, man. Thank you for coming through. Uh, I appreciate it's it, man. Been, it's this, been a pleasure. This is a, this is a fun pod. Yeah, it's fun. Appreciate it. Fun man. as fuck. Yeah, and uh, congrats on being a new father. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can have it, you here again in the relative future. We can anytime uh, you want me on here. This is yeah. fun. I I enjoy this. Or oh, we can do maybe if you want to hmm. an election pod. Ooh, that would be really fun. Yeah, twenty twenty four is around the corner. It's coming. It? We'll, we'll pencil it in. We'll, I'll keep that in mind. And okay. We'll just, talk just an it. idea. Let me just talk about how stupid this is. Like, or, or how smart it is. We don't know. We don't know. Vote with your heads. Vote with your heads. Your if your head deceives it, chop it off. You know what I'm talking about. Even if it's not educational, we can uh, poke fun at it. Plenty. Yeah. It'll be entertaining. <laughs> These are the leaders of the world. Yeah, exactly. More, more cowbell. Exactly. Guys, Cowstars Podcast. Uh, we're here every, actually only every Monday now. Um, at 7 p.m. Uh, we have a website in com. We also have a Patreon where you can find exclusive content there. Go donate. Um, you know, money, cash, as the Wu-Tang Clan said, cash rules everything around me. So, you know, go donate if you want the pod and everything to um, catapult. And, oh, by the way, we have two new podcasts that the network is uh, producing. Okay. Um, one, the Unhinged and Uncensored podcast with uh, myself and Lolo Savage, where we just go off, we rant, we have a good time. It's kind of like a comedy based setting. Kind of what we do here at the Macau mm-hmm. Stars. A little less serious. Um, sometimes more serious. Uh, and then we have also the Guts and Gore podcast with uh, Molly, um, your sister-in-law, my girlfriend. Um, and we both review horror movies. And so, yeah, we got a lot of stuff in the mix. So go check those out. Alright, guys. Have a good night. David, again, it was a pleasure coming on. Appreciate it, Have man. you come on. Alright. Peace, guys. More cowbell.